A quorum being present, this town meeting is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. One quick uh, comment before we begin. Mr. Brown would like a moment of uh, personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. Maria. Uh, for you that might be interested, a uh, hundred years ago today, the town accepted Memorial Park. And the way that the town council is trying to research a deed will probably be another hundred years. Thanks, Ray. Okay, we left off finishing uh, section P, so we will begin discussion on uh, section Q. Is there any discussion on section Q? None appearing. We'll move on to section R. Section R. Not appearing. We'll move to section S. Not appearing. Section T. Okay. To turn the page, but I'm guessing it's section U next. Is there any uh, discussion on section U? None appearing. Finally, section V. Okay, none appearing. We have a motion before us under Article 9. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. We now move to Article 10. And, uh, let's see. Who is making the presentation? Okay. Mr. Zeke. How you doing? Got here a little quicker than I uh, thought, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't feel like that on Monday, did it? Uh, my name is Dave Zeke. I'm the chair of the Climate Advisory um, Committee. On Monday night, we uh, took a moment to recognize Ron D'Addario's contributions to uh, Reading and, and to the town meeting, and I would like to echo that. And to, to further say that I would like to recognize Ron D'Addario's contributions to the Climate uh, Advisory Committee, a decade's worth of contributions to this committee. In fact, if you want to know a secret, this bag bylaw thing was actually his idea, and then he left, you know? so. <laughs> But if you, if you like this idea, then uh, give, give Ron the credit. If you don't like it so much, then, then blame me. This is in response to an instructional motion from our May meeting. It's a new uh, bylaw, 8.13 regulation of retail checkout bags. The problem with, the problem with bags. Sorry. Oh, okay. Over here. Can we just go to like full screen? So. Which arrow? This, this thing? Yeah, right there. More like that? Is that big enough? Uh, just a point of information, Linda Phillips, Precinct 7. Mr. Zeke, do you happen to have a copy of the original instructional motion so we know what the context of this is? Because mm -hmm. I, I did bring one to read, but if you have a slide, that's even better. But now you saw everything, so. Thank you. <laughs> Here's the instructional motion. Okay, Mr. Zeke. So to draft a bylaw to regulate 
uh, explore options and to, and to draft a bylaw to regulate the use of single-use thin film plastic bags in Reading in accordance with similar practices across Massachusetts and in consultation with stakeholders in Reading and to present that proposed bylaw for consideration at the next subsequent town meeting tonight. Is that okay. So what's wrong with the, what's wrong with the with these bags? The these single use thin film bags, there's a number of things killing animals uh, through ingestion and entanglement, uh, it both land animals and, and sea animals. Um, you know, with, with our, uh, it, anything that gets into the Ipswich River can also get into the ocean if it can get by the Beaver Dam. And these, and, and, and it also uh, is a problem for just uh, animals that, you know, in the forest, if you will, or, uh, or pets for that matter. Uh, and I've seen pictures of, for example, deer with bags over their heads. Um, so killing animals through ingestion and entanglement, polluting the land and the coastline with litter, such as this picture here near Market Basket. Uh, these bags are very aerodynamic. They just they just lift off out of and they'll lift off out of your trash can. They'll lift off out of anywhere with a little puff of air, and uh, they also uh, clog the storm drains, and they add solid waste and they entangle recycling equipment. So um, these. Recycling is done with uh, with mechanical machines, and and and, then the, and these bags have to be stripped out of these machines every so often because they get they kind of roll up the way uh, you know the way string will roll up in your in your uh, vacuum cleaner. These bags roll up in that in that gear. American families take home uh, something like 1,500 plastic bags each year. Um, so that's you're talking about um, 30 bags. Um, a week to do that, you know, three bags a week. Um, so, you know, ha you can get half those bags in one visit to the grocery store. And, and um, if you look at for all of Reading, that would be something on the order of eight million bags that we're, that we're collecting, taking home, and, and probably throwing away. About 5,000 or 5% 5 of such plastic bags ever end up in uh, being incinerated or recycled or anything. Um, now, we do have a bunch of people in Reading already who bring their own reusable bags to stores. So maybe we're not at the, you know, the far end of 8 million, but 4 million is a big number too for this kind of thing. And Americans across the, across the nation throw away uh, 100 billion plastic bags each year. The thing that's especially obnoxious about the thin film bags is that plastic bags don't decompose. They just crumble. They, get, they come into smaller and smaller pieces. They get torn up into little bits, one millimeter, five millimeter size pieces. And those pieces uh, then just get dispersed in the, in the environment. So for example, there are uh, 250 plastic pieces in a pound of sea salt. So if you like sea salt, you like plastic. Um, the, the, uh, they also tend to uh, collect toxins. Um, they, they collect things like DDT or, or PCBs, uh, and, and so animals that eat those also pick up those toxins. So that's, that's the, the problem with the bags. These are, these are examples uh, in, of how, the, how these bags appear in nature, something like 85% of sea turtles ultimately um, die to plastic bags in some fashion like this, where he's, where he's eating it or get trapped in these bags. I, f I find these particularly kind of heartbreaking examples um, because these animals have no, uh, no knowledge of what's going on and no way to fix it. As we get to the, uh, into, into the bylaw itself, you'll see that the stated purpose is to regulate the retail use of plastic bags. But really, the purpose of this bylaw is, in, is to encourage uh, Reading residents to adopt reusable or re recyclable bags for use at checkout. So this is a habit. This is about us changing our behaviors. Um, it's about us thinking that this is the right thing to do, bringing our own bags to the store. Even, even, though, even though 
as, as it says, the bylaw identifies options for checkout bags, now the throwaway single use, uh, other than the throwaway single use bags. The real intent here is that once you have accumulated a couple of these reusable bags, that you will in fact reuse them. And that, that's really the point of this whole exercise. It's not, it's not really about trying to police our business, it's about changing our own expectations. That's why we're doing this. Um, the DPW director will administer and enforce the bylaw, and uh, pen penalties for this uh, bylaw are mild as compared to typical uh, Reading bylaws, as, as we'll see when we get into the bylaw. So the main, the main feature, really, in, in the bylaw is this three mil thick minimum. So it's that three, it's that three mil thick minimum that gets, that gets rid of really the, the single use bags. There was, uh, we had an example on Monday night of a three mil thick uh, uh, bag from um, Market Basket in Newburyport that we had uh, on display out on the table in the hall. Um, that would be acceptable, um, but it, as you, if you saw it, or if it is, it's considerably uh, more, you know, considerably thicker product than, than, the, than the throwaway bags, and, and, is, and can be recycled. Um, checkout bags can be provided or, uh, for free or sold. We don't discourage selling. We, don't, uh, it, we actually, in, some, in, a, in a way, encourage putting a price on these bags. Um, the, the biggest issue um, we, is that we, we're not trying to replace thin film checkout throwaway bags with thick film checkout throwaway bags. You know, it's not that you're gonna that you should be collecting up much more expensive bags and taking those home and throwing them away. It's it's that that is the that is, if that kind of behavior you know is is what we find, then we would probably want to revisit this. But but the idea is that the bags that you will get whether that's, it's that minimal of three, a three mil bag, or whether it's something much more uh, you know, robust, a, a cotton bag or something like that, that that's, that's a bag that you'll want to use. Um, I know we have car trunks full of these bags, and we get them in the mail, and, we, and some of them are free, and occasionally we buy one, but, but we have to actually uh, you know, eventually give them away or something. We have many more than we need at home. Alternatively, um, uh, recyclable paper bags. Um, so, for example, and, and a, a friend of mine from Wayland who did this said, don't go for anything less than four mils because businesses will just make thick bags. At three mils, they'll just make thick bags. Um, go for four mils because then it's, then it's economically un uh, impossible, I guess, for them to do that. But that's not really what I've, uh, what I've observed. Um, I went over to Concord. It's had, they have a 2.5 mil um, mi uh, minimum. I went to the CVS there. They were offering paper bags for the, for the freebie and cloth bags for, the, you know, for a buck. So it's just, you know, they, I think businesses have caught on to how this is supposed to work. They're not really trying to play that game of walking the minimum, you know, what's the minimum spec and, and what can I do? What can, how can I do business the way I've always done it? You know, and just barely make the make the grade. So, so I I'm, I'm, I'm have confidence that our businesses will do that as well. Now, non-checkout bags are not affected. Um, so, you know, you go in the grocery store. There's a lot of plastic in the grocery store. There's a lot of bags in the grocery store. So there are bags on the produce aisles that's not affected. There, are, you know, almost everything in, is packaged in, in plastic in in the, in, in the stores and grocery stores, especially these days. That is not affected. Um, Bags for bulk items that you might pick up, you know, for, for fruit or candy or something, or wrapping flowers in, or, or anything sold, uh, anything sold in uh, for bulk where you, you know, go to Home Depot and you get a bag of, of bags, you know, a roll of bags, that's not affected by this. Laundry bags, dry cleaning bags, not affected by this. So, and, and further, it's not, it's not about what you bring to the store. This is about what the stores make available for checkout to you. If you happen to have a bunch of these little thin film bags at home and you want to drag those to the store to be reused, 
that's fine. You know, but you, what you bring is up to you. It's not, it's not affected by this bylaw. We talked to a number of businesses, large and small, in Reading. I think the general response was not excited, but kind of accepting that, that they weren't really concerned. They, they, they felt that they could deal with it. Um, it's, it's interesting that some of them, um, like uh, Home Depot and CVS Market Basket, deferred to corporate, but these are the very places where you can go to Newburyport or you can go to Concord and you can see how they are dealing with it, with it today. There's no mystery to, to um, what, they, what they can do. And then we have other businesses like uh, Calarisos and Hitching Post, you know, where they, they have always used paper. It was kind of a, a yawn for them to, to ask the question because they weren't using those bags anyway. Um, we did have some comments from our, at our uh, information meeting on the, in October 24th that convenience is important to customers, the, thinking, the convenience of having the, the thin film bags. Uh, I think this is the group. They can decide whether convenience is of that type is the driving uh, motivation. Um, so, so I think our businesses are going to do very well with this. There is a, there is a, uh, you know, when they just convert, then they're going to have more expensive bags than these than the thin foam bags are. But very quickly, that that expense levels off when more and more people are bringing these bags back to the store. And then, and then there's no expense, right? And they can charge for the bags. So, uh, you know, the, the bag that I mentioned from Market Basket in, in Newburyport was 10 cents. I've got one from Gloucester that's 10 cents. I mean, you can get them at, sh at Stop and Shop for 10 cents, you know. Those, uh, but, but you may want a better bag, you know. Um, if you go for a, for a more expensive bag, like a cloth bag, you know, then that'll be uh, even more reusable. Fifty-eight communities have uh, approved plastic bag bylaws in some form. Um, they, they all, and they have gone pretty much uh, to a focus on, as, as we have done tonight, uh, on focusing on a minimum bag thickness, and then and then and then requiring use of reusable or recyclable bags. And uh, we're going to, I've got a couple of edits coming up in the bylaw that it's going to take out other things that, that I think we really don't need to accomplish this. Um, 40, 48%, excuse me, 38% of these, of the towns that have these laws have a four mil minimum thickness. Uh, let's say 38, 27% have a, have a three mil thickness. So we're right in the middle, and, that, and then there's about 20% that have a 2.5 mil thickness, and, and it goes on, it kind of goes on down from there. You may uh, you may know that Wakefield passed a bag law like this about 10 days ago, uh, on a night very much like this actually, um, and uh, they went for a 2.25 mil thickness. Um, so I actually I had to update this. this <clears throat> so they're counting Wakefield. There have been three. Uh, towns that have passed these bylaws in the last 10 days. So this is this has become a quite a, you know a, a wave. And and I was told today while I was in Boston that that the Boston proposal is coming up uh, very shortly for for a vote. So um, that's it on the on the intro. Um, we're going to go to the. Uh, the bylaw itself. Should I, should I accept questions now, or just we just walk through that? We'll do it when we, so we walk through the bylaw. Okay. I'd prefer you walk through the bylaw, and then we'll go to the bylaw committee report, and then we can go to questions. Okay. Okay. So we start start through it. Yes. All right. So there's a section on, there's the purpose, there's the definitions, there's the regulations, and there's administration. There's four sections to this, this bylaw. Um, and the purpose, as I, as I had read, it said, uh, regulate the retail use of plastic bags and adopt the use of reusable, recyclable, and or biodegradable bags for use at checkout. I didn't delete biodegradable, but it's not going to be in there when we get done, I think, because uh, I'm going to ask that it be, it be eliminated. Um, so. 
the definitions, um, checkout bags is a carryout bag provided by a store to a customer at a point of sale. Checkout bags shall not include bags, whether plastic or not, which loose product or produce or products are placed by the consumer for <coughs> delivery to the point of sale. Um, compostable plastic bags. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, not gonna use this definition. I'm not proposing to take it out, but the compostable plastic bag uh, conforms to the ASTM 64, D6400 standard, and this requires uh, that it be uh, not only compostable, but certified and labeled as such. Um, this definition, if, if you accept my changes, will not be used in this. Um, the, direct, the director the, is, is the person who's going to administer this. That's going to be the DPW director for us. Um, the next definition, um, marine degradable bags, I'm deleting. I'm asking to delete. This, uh, there, you, can, you can get marine degradable plastic bags, but this, uh, this particular standard, G7081, <coughs> Is, has been recalled by ASTM and they're revisiting it, they're redoing it. So right now there's not a, a, a really a, a, a 7081 to, to refer to. Consequently, there we know bags that can, can say that they conform to it. The, um, both the compost, well, in a minute I'll get back to what else we want to say about that. So that's, the, that's that definition is going away. Recyclable paper bags, 100% recyclable, contains at least 40%. <coughs> Uh, recycled paper and is clearly labeled as such. Reuse, reusable checkout bags, a bag with handles that can carry 25 pounds over a distance of 300 feet and is either made of cloth or other machine washable fabrics or made of plastic that is durable, non-toxic, non and generally considered a food grade material other than um, polyvinyl chloride and it's at least three mils thick. I'm, I'm, I'm proposing to delete polyethylene. Um, polyethylene is, a, is, is most of these thin film bags are made from polyethylene and there are multiple kinds of polyethylene. However, and, and polyethylene is, is a material that crumbles into these little pieces and, and you know, is, is a, is, is a offending bag. But um, a number of places in Massachusetts are using um, thicker polyethylene bags. So the, they go with the high density polyethylene, like the, like the one out of uh, Newburyport. And at this point, I don't think we need to get into the material constraints quite so much uh, as long as we've got the thickness. And, and so we would allow um, our businesses to also use those kind of, of uh, thick polyethylene bags. Uh, retail establishment is any business um, including but not limited to a list here, restaurants, pharmacies, convenience and grocery stores and so forth. That does not include things like your doctor's office. You know, if your doctor gives you a plastic bag or your dentist gives you a plastic bag out the door, that's not really what their business is, you know, selling you stuff like that. So, uh, so that would, they would be uh, exempted, but most everybody else is, is covered here. And then the key, the key definition of single use plastic checkout bag, any plastic bag less than three mils thick. Uh, Moving on to regulations. So this is the, the um, 13.3.1 is, was the requirement um, for, for our conforming to the compostable and the marine degradable standards. So I'm gonna take that out. I don't think we need that. Again, if we have the minimum thickness and we have reusable and recyclable bags, I, don't, I think we need not worry at this point about the materials. Uh, of, of those to, as far as, as uh, being compostable and, and degrade, biodegradable. Th uh, those are available uh, you can, and you can get those, uh, you know, in, the, in any store that sells bags and you may use them at home, you may use them for doggy bags or, you know, garbage bags or whatever, but, but for the purpose of checkout bags, I think we don't need that at this point. And as I said, that's been the, and, and I say we don't need that in part because that's been the trend for, um, for, for these bag bylaws in Massachusetts. Um, 13, the, the next one, uh, so these are getting renumbered now because that was, that was uh, if that's deleted. The um, 
if a retail establishment provides checkout bags, the checkout bags shall be reusable checkout bags or recyclable paper bags. Retail establishments are encouraged to make reusable bags available for free or for sale at a reasonable price. So this is, this is kind of the, this is the basic rule about what you get at checkout at, at any of these uh, retailers. Uh, the next one is, is the key uh, requirement on uh, the single-use plastic bags, uh, except as otherwise provided. Single-use plastic checkout bags shall not be distributed, used, or sold for checkout or other purposes at a retail establishment in Reading. Uh, existing stocks of single-use checkout bags shall be phased out within six months following the effective date of this uh, bylaw. The next section just goes into a list of, of the kinds of bags that we're not talking about, exemptions from this bylaw, packaging bulk items, fruit, vegetables, nuts, grains, and so forth, uh, contain bags to contain or wrap frozen foods, meat or fish, flowers, potted plants, items where dampness is a problem, laundry or dry cleaning bags, bags sold in packaging, containers, multiple bags intended to be used for home, and so forth. Those, those are not, we're talking about checkout bags. The uh, director has the authority to administer and enforce this section, and including a, uh, um, with this non-criminal disposition, and non-criminal disposition means there's fine, there's a, it's a ticket kind of fine, it's a fine for a violation. It, you know, it's an option for them. Um, retail establishments will have 15 calendar days after a notice of a violation to pay the penalty or request a hearing. Um, and no more than one such penalty would be imposed within a 15-day period. Now, typically, uh, Reading bylaws uh, are enforceable on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you're in violation on Monday, that's a fine. And if you're still in violation on Tuesday, that's a fine. And if Wednesday comes around, you, that's another fine. You know, it's this, that's, and that's why I'm saying this, this bylaw is not intended to, to lean on the businesses. It's really intended to send us a message and establish, you know, a, a practice in, in Reading. And um, then the next section, in the event uh, compliance is not feasible uh, because of unavailability or uh, for, of, for suitable bags, then um, the director can grant a waiver. So there's a six month waiver. So they've already had a six month phase in period. Here's a six month waiver. And the last part of that, he can, can grant one additional six month waiver. So. We, you know, we, if, if you really have problems in your business, you know, you can easily get a year's, you know, delay of implementing this. Uh, if you have more than that, you know, maybe you can get another six months, but, you know, it's not that hard. It's really not going to be that hard. And the director can promulgate rules and regulations as needed to implement this. Then this other section, this table at the end, this is, there's, there's a table in section 1.8 of the, uh, the bylaws. This is that non-criminal uh, fines and fees section that says, in, in this case, this will be, this will be like a, a new line in the table for this section of the bylaws that says for the first offense, it's a warning, second offense, $50, and all additional offenses, $200. So that's it. Um, so I am proposing to strike out the, the uh, the, the provisions that, I, that were, uh, you know, re, you know, were hashed out, in, I mean, uh, lined out in, in the bylaws as we went. That's it. Okay, do we have a bylaw report? Mr. Sylvester? Paul Sylvester, uh, Chairman, Bylaw Committee. On our meeting of October 25th, uh, the Bylaw Committee reviewed the latest revision of this bylaw. It is a little bit different from what's up here right now, but in substance, it's basically the same. We voted 4-0-0 to recommend the subject of this bylaw to town meeting. Thank you. Mr. Lolasha. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'll just step through the changes quickly, quickly. There's two changes if the moderator is willing to accept this as the motion on the floor. The changes that are shown in gray are in your warrant report, and those are the ones that the bylaw committee had seen and has voted on. They're at the end of the text in a small box.
There are some other changes simply shown in red, and they're all, they're all cross out, there's no addition. So there's two types of bylaw changes to the original one. One you've seen, the bylaw committee has voted on, some of this red is new tonight. Is there any objection to allowing that to be part of the main motion? None appearing, we will consider that the main motion. Is there further discussion? Yes. Yes. You. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Eric Burkhardt, Precinct 2. A uh, couple questions. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation, for putting this together. Um, first, if, does the DPW have a point of view? So a question either for the town manager or the director. Um, either on the additional administrative burden here and, and the ease to take that on given current constraints? And also, um, is it in fact the, the, to the point of uh, the plastic bags being a problem in the storm drains, do you see that as a, as a meaningful problem in the town? Mr. Lasher, if I could just speak first. Just to be perfectly clear, I think it's clear, the fines are not for the people using the bags. The fines are for the, that would be very difficult to administer. Understood. The fines are for the stores. Understood. I wasn't sure the first time I read it through. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. Jeff Zaga, Public Works Director. Um, just a couple of, couple of points. One, um, first of all, I've looked at other communities in terms of the enforcement piece, uh, and it varies from place to place. Uh, in some communities, it's actually the Board of Health. In some communities, actually, we mentioned Gloucester. Gloucester actually voted Tuesday night to enact this, their bylaw, and it's under the building inspector as the enforcement person who I had a chat with this evening. And, uh, and also in other communities, uh, it's the police department. In fact, uh, Manchester, Mass, it's, they're the enforcement. So, and the degree of enforcement really uh, is very minimal in terms of what they're actually doing. I mean, I don't envision the town manager approving a, uh, a staff of three or four people to go out and <laughs> knock on every uh, restaurant, every store to see if people are enforcing this. Uh, however, what I would envision is at some point down the road after, I think we're after, what, after a year potentially, or a year and a half actually, to have people in a position to reuse all their stock, use all their bags and so forth, to get to a point where hopefully everybody's in somewhat of compliance. But I would envision if I get a, a request to do an investigation and so forth that something's not in compliance, I would do that and have a chat with, with that particular uh, entity or store and so forth. So um, I guess it's, it's uh, the enforcement's gonna be really um, after, I guess after a year, if this thing is in place, uh, I don't really envision it being a real structured thing. It's just in terms of kind of following up on complaints and so forth. Okay, is there a follow-up? The, the storm drains peace, and then I do have another question. Yeah. Um, if I might just add, um, we have talked about this internally. Um, it's up to you to help us on this. You're the ones that are going to notice violations. We, we can't be inspecting all the time. Um, it, it's not going to be an annual inspection or any regular basis. It's going to have to be from complaints. As far as the storm drainage issue, issue it's really not a big problem for us. Uh, we really have a very aggressive uh, storm uh, catch basin cleaning program, uh, storm basin not cleaning program. So uh, I don't envision that being a real big problem. Thank you. And one more question. Um, okay. The, you had a, the, for the presenter, you had a list up there of several communities in the state that have similar bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, there was a handout in the back, um, the environmental promises and costs or product bans, which was, which was interesting. I, I had a chance to skim it. Um, I noticed that the publisher is Northwind Strategies, which I did a quick Google search. It's a PR firm. So maybe not my first choice for um, an objective assessment of this, right? So I'd like to ask you, um, the one point that this does make is around unintended consequences. Um, so of all those communities um, in the state that have passed similar bylaws, has, do you know of any uh, studies, objective analyses of the effect so far? I know you have some anecdotal um, kind of reactions going to Concord and so on and seeing it's having the intended effect, which was changing behaviors, right? But have there been any objective assessments of all these bylaws in the state 
as to whether they are in fact having the intended effect of, of changing behavior, reducing pollution, and so on and so forth. So there's a, there's a very good um, website, massgreen.org, uh, that, that has information on these bylaws. And it has a couple of uh, reports, I guess, on, on towns that have done this before. I mean, that a lot of the towns that have done this uh, are, are either very early in their, in their process or maybe have not even gone into effect yet. Now, they passed the law, but, but it hasn't become effective yet. But of the ones that I read about, and, and I, I'm sorry I don't have that here in front of me, but uh, I, they, they've, been, they've been positive, especially with respect to reducing the total amount of, of waste, just the, the total amount of waste that they're, that they're having to deal with. Um, and I didn't see anything in, in there that well, it's, it seemed to be a complaint or a problem or uh, regret or anything like that. I think it's gone very well, very smoothly. Is that, that's not, that's not as, as detailed as that handout, which I didn't know was anything about, but that's, uh, I would have brought that had I, had I realized we needed to discuss that. What was the name of the site again? Sorry? The name of the site you referenced? The, a website? The, the uh, mass, uh, green, massgreen.org. Okay. Thank you. For the discussion, yes, right on the edge, yes. Jennifer Hillary, Precinct 7. I have some questions about the administration and enforcement section. In 8.13.4.1, the first paragraph, it states, in addition to any other means of enforcement. And I'm curious, what is, what is the intent of that particular phrase? That's, that's to allow this, this fine at the end. That's what allows this fine. So this is like a ticket that you might get for, um, you know, for traffic ticket or something. You know, I mean, it's that kind of a fine. The, and you know, if you don't, if you don't pay your, your traffic ticket, then you end up in court. You know, the, so the enforcement, the, the default enforcement, I, as I understand it, and maybe somebody else wants to weigh in on this, but the default enforcement for something like this is to prosecute in a criminal court. So this says we're not, we've got a, we've got a, a, a little lighter uh, touch on, on the enforcement of this by having you know, dollar fines in, that, that we would do first and only if a business you know, then didn't want to pay those, those fines would it go further. So the way, the way I'm reading it, and correct me if I'm wrong, the second part of that sentence actually does refer to the penalties in section 1.8. So if that section was taken out, what, if any, enforcement would you lose? If, if section 1.8 was taken out? No, if the phrase, in addition to any other means of enforcement, that seems very broad to me and leaves open any means of enforcement. And I, I recognize that some of the other cities and towns do use similar language. I would note it includes lawful enforcement. But I, I feel that particular phrase is very broad. So I'm wondering if there's. So that, that language was, was recommended to us by our town council. Uh, that it, because, that it, and that's, that's refer, other, that other means of enforcement are, as I said, you know, court means or criminal means beyond these uh, fines. May I inquire of town council if, in fact, the second part of that sentence, starting from the provision of section 8.13 to the end, sufficiently outlines the enforcement allowable to the director? Mr. Mayors. Well, I hope I can answer this. The, um, what you always find in town bylaws is two means of enforcement. And they so sound almost the same, but they're really different. One's a fine, one's a penalty. Okay. Okay? The second part here refers to um, the penalty, the so-called ticketing, administrative ticketing process that the enforcement person can issue. Um, so um, the 
uh, in this case, the, the DPW um, will be given the authority to issue a ticket for a violation. Um, the fine is a criminal penalty and has to be imposed by court. So any violation of a town bylaw always is enforceable by a fine uh, imposed um, by a judge in a, in a court. Since no one will ever, ever wants to go to court to collect fines this small, that's why we have administrative ticketing, because they're, it's something that can be done right in-house. That's why it says in addition to. So the in addition to refers to the ability for, to fine criminally. That's right, which is just any, any violation of any town bylaw, you can always um, uh, have a criminal penalty for violation. Um, I have a, another question. I may come back with a motion relative to that. In 8.13.4.4, it states the director may promulgate rules and regulations to implement section 1.83. Now this technically is titled a regulation, so I'm concerned that using the word regulation allows the director to change the regulation we're voting on. So I wonder if it may be more appropriate to say the director shall determine the process to implement 8.13. I don't really have, I don't know if that makes any difference. Does it make any difference? Mr. Meares. <clears throat> So how about we change promulgate rules and regulations to get rid of the end regulations also, but okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. May um, establish uh, procedures. That's it. How's that? I, I think that? I think that works so that it doesn't appear that the director will change the regulation of retail okay. checkout bags, which we're voting on tonight. Are you making that uh, proposed amendment? Y yes, please. Oh, okay, is there a second? Second. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes, Ms. Phillips. Linda Phillips, Precinct 7. I'd like a little more big picture approach to this because we're, we're getting into the actual bylaw, <clears throat> but it's not clear with me that um, a bylaw is the way to go on this. Um, I did a little research on the, um, on the original are you, are you discussing the proposed amendment? No. Okay. Don't we, we get a chance to talk about? No, no, we, we talk about the proposed oh, amendment. Oh, then we're going to vote we, on the amendment? Then we'll, yes, okay. yes. Okay, further discussion on the proposed amendment. Yes. Andy Friedman, Precinct 4, Selectman and Liaison to the Climate Advisory Committee. Um, this is actually a question to count Town Council. Are, are, are regulations and by and rules used to um, explain the process by which the bylaw is met. In other words, is procedures the same thing as regulations and are we voting on, the, we're voting on a bylaw, right? We're not voting on a regulation. 
Right. And, the, and a regulation would explain, explain how the bylaw is met? Implemented. So, so I think as it was originally written, it, it is in the appropriate hierarchy of bylaw and then the bylaw, how to meet the bylaw, is explained by a regulation, I, I think. Okay, further discussion on the bylaw, on the proposed amendment, excuse me. Mr. Tuttle. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Dave Tuttle of Precinct 3. The, uh, I think the wording that we need for this particular amendment should say, establish and promulgate either rules and regulations or procedures, depending on what the choice is. But we, um, we need to say that you know, if they are established, he has to explain them to everybody and promulgate the, the uh, rules, regulations, procedures. Further discussion? Yes, Mr. Barnes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jonathan Barnes, uh, Precinct 5. Just a question about this, um, uh, perhaps, distinction. I know for boards, committees, and commissions under either the bylaw or the charter, I forget, or maybe both, um, when a board or committee or commission seeks to enact rules or regulations, that's a public process that has to be posted and for which there has to be a public hearing. Does that same protocol or, or requirement apply to um, the director of public works if he or she, under the original language, if he or she were to, in this case he, were to promulgate uh, rules and regulations, would that have had to have been through a public posted process? And, and is that different now if we change it to procedures, would he then not have to do it through a public posting, public hearing process. Mr. Meares. No. Um, <laughs> Could you explain? So, okay, so um, the director is charged here with whatever it is that's going to be, procedures or regulations, whatever it is, it's the director that's going to do it. The director has the authority to issue regulations um, established procedures, whatever. No public hearing is required. No open process is required. It's just the director. Thank you. Further discussion? Uh, Mr. Coco? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Richard Coco, Precinct 4. The question I have is, once the rules are promulgated, if I say it right, um, are they going to be published in the local newspaper or some media? Going back to that thing about media and, and the bylaws. Is there any kind of wording in here that says they will be published? There's nothing. Mr. Zeke. There's no wording in here that says w where they would be published, no. So we I should guess. add words to the effect that after Section 13, 8.13p, these rules will be published in a local news media or some, some words to that effect. How are the, that, how are the, how are the uh, um, businesses in Reading going to know about the rules unless they're published? Well, obviously, they would have to be communicated in some fashion, right, to the, to the businesses. I, but I don't know about the publishing in the newspaper part. That's, so uh, I think the words yeah. should be there, there that they're published in, in the newspaper so people can read them. So I make that motion. Amendment. Well, we have a proposed amendment in front of us now. We will come back to that. We're still dealing with the, the amendment that we have on the floor. Okay, fine. The only, the only point I'm trying to make is, it seems to me, I'm all in favor of this whole concept. Uh, I just want to make certain that the rules get out to the public. And then the other comment I want to make, and this is something else that bothered me a bit, I'm not going to be a policeman to this thing. If I go to a small business in Reading, and if for some crazy reason I'm using a thin plastic bag, I am not about to call anyone about that. And I don't want to be in a police state kind of situation. I mean, I, if people cut me off in traffic, I don't take the license them and call up the police. So I don't want to be in a situation where I've got to call, call up on a small business and, hey, you know, he's using a plastic bag. That's just a, my personal comment. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Mayors. 
Well, happily, the public records law is coming to your rescue. Um, it was recently amended. It requires all town uh, boards and all town departments to post on the website all um, commonly used documents. Um, town hasn't completely implemented that yet because it takes time, but um, this would certainly be, whatever procedures are, are established, it would certainly be uh, in the category of commonly used documents, so we'd expect them to appear on the town's website. Was your hand over here? No. Mr. Mon? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jamie Mon, Precinct 4. These, these, this bylaw is more detailed than many of our bylaws. It goes down literally to the millimeter. Um, and with regard to this amendment, it's my understanding that no matter whether the Director of Public Works promulgates rules, regulations, or procedures, they in no way can change the specifics of this bylaw. Is that correct? So, so what we pass tonight as a bylaw cannot be changed or altered or modified by what's, what's in the bylaw. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Ms. O'Neill. Mary Ellen O'Neill, Precinct 4. Just a quick note, I think there's some confusion because this is called regulation of retail bags, but it's not a regulation, it's a bylaw. I recommend not voting in favor of this amendment. But keeping the original, it just would be probably consistent with um, any other similar bylaws that we have. Thank you. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes, Mr. O'Neill. John O'Neill, Precinct 4. Uh, I'm very conversant with the legislature and promulgating laws especially the charge in a state department or administration to implement. This is the language they always use. Instead of may, though, they say shall. You know, shall establish. I mean, that's what you, that's just the common way that this goes. And it's so that, in fact, businesses who are going to be infected will know exactly, you know, what they have to do. Uh, it, so this is very detailed. I don't think there's going to be any need. I agree with Mr. Bond. I don't think there's going to be much of a need for anything else besides what's the bylaw. And it's more going to be a matter of just, you know, informing the businesses. But I think the language is, is, is fine as it originally was stated. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? None appearing. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor of the amendment which strikes the words promulgate rules and regulations and, and replaces it with established procedures. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, and the motion does not carry. We are now back to um, the main motion. Ms. Phillips, did you have a comment? It's me again. Um, <clears throat> the reason I asked for the original instructional motion to be read because there's a couple things that stand out in my mind. Um, town meeting directed the Climate Advisory Committee. We directed them to explore options and draft a bylaw. What are the options that you explored besides banning bags? Mr. Zeke. This, this, well, the options are what materials are allowed in bags that are acceptable what thicknesses are allowed in bags that are acceptable, what other requirements like reuse and recycling are, are, would be put on bags that are acceptable. How do, what information did you provide that shows us that you did that? I, I, didn't, I didn't show it in my presentation. It, it was, it, we, we reviewed options by, by reviewing very, by any number of resources, including uh, bylaws and, and ordinances that were passed by other towns in Massachusetts. Um, but there were, there were another of other comments and, and so forth, like on, that, on the website that I mentioned, the, the massgreen.org website. I did not show you what all the possibilities were here at all. 
Well, the options are important because if we don't have options, then we're being channeled into a direction to make it seem as if we have no choice. Choices are good. <clears throat> And it said, thin film uh, bylaw to regulate the use of single-use thin film bags with similar practices across Massachusetts and in consultation with the stakeholders in Reading. Big question came up. You had a meeting. You had, what, five, six months to bring this back to town meeting. You had a meeting a couple of weeks ago. I, I don't think it was well published. There was only seven or eight people because my husband attended that night. It was another meeting I attended. That doesn't seem like you're really out there selling your idea with options, information, because frankly, I'm not impressed with other, what other communities do in Massachusetts because they can choose their own path. We're, Reading is unique in a lot of ways, and I think keeping that uniqueness is important. It makes Reading desirable in many ways that we just don't always follow the crowd, but we really examine and review everything we need to do and, and vote what we think is best for our community. So I think that's a problem because we're making a bylaw that affects every single person in this town and every single person that does business in this town. And our big businesses use these bags and they don't have any town meeting members here to represent them. Maybe we do if they're in your precinct. That's a, that's a problem. The other thing I thought was interesting when I looked up a little research on the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives, this stems from the United Nations. That puts up a big red flag for me. The United Nations establishes a Cities for Climate Protection program that works with cities, towns, and counties to reduce pollution greenhouse gases that they believe cause global warming. Another red flag. This UN Council is one of three major global transnational municipal networks. Transnational municipal networks. Via a five milestone process of measurement communication, planning, implementing, and monitoring climate change mitigation via reduced energy use. What energy is going to be reduced by having, get, uh, doing away with these small plastic bags? So you're reading a charter from a UN organization and you're in, in, uh, implying a, re a requirement that we don't, we don't have. We do not have a requirement on this law, to, on this bylaw, to reduce energy usage. This is not a bylaw about climate change or global warming. You know, this is a, this is about killing animals and and uh, trash and clogging up uh, our systems and our, and our recycling system. So I, I, no, it doesn't pretend to meet the requirements that you went and, and uh, found somewhere. Well, what everyone else is doing in the Commonwealth that we're being advised to go along with is part of the Cities for Climate Protection. If you look it up, it's part of that. This is a local connection of it. And, you, and this group reports to, the, uh, to advise the Board of Selectmen on policies regarding cl Cities for Climate Protection program. So yeah. you are tied in with that. Maybe you don't know, but you are. But I thought the job description was even more interesting because it says your job description that advises the Board of Selectmen is to conduct a local emissions inventory of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, Ms. Phillips, you're straying from the subject, which no, is, this, yes, this you is are. The this is, under this is the mandate under the Board is, of Selectmen. We're talking about plastic bags. Please stay to the subject. Um, well, the plastic bags are not in their job description. I would like to finish explaining this. Well, Conducting stay on the subject, please. Their job description via their association with the Board of Selectmen is to conduct local emissions of greenhouse gas emissions. I Ms. want Phillips, to know if they... Phillips, Ms. Phillips, hold on one second. Ms. Phillips, this subject before us is plastic bags. Please stick to that subject. It's okay. Great. I'm questioning how we get to greenhouse gas emissions and emission reducing targets to plastic bags. That's There's not no connection to me. This is their mandate to do greenhouse emissions. Ms. Phillips, it doesn't matter what an they, you consider their plan. mandate. The, the issue before us is plastic bags. Please stick with, to the subject. But that's not the Climate Change Committee's it's mandate this, under... We're talking about the 
the article yes. before us, the motion before us. That's what we're discussing. Please. So I would like to know what emissions are affected by having a plastic bag policy. I believe it was told you there is no connection, that this is a, an issue of all plastic bags. That's what we're discussing. So if the plastic bags that we're trying to get not to use don't have any effect in the climate change emission policy, then this is a waste of all of our time. That's my point. They're supposed to make reports on the benefits that are created. Ms. Phillips, I, I'm going to take the floor away from you if you keep doing this. We are talking about this particular article in front of us. Please yes. stick with the subject. Plastic bags. Yes. There's been no public posting or hearing for anyone to comment on these bylaws. They have changed these bylaws after they were put in the town meeting warrant. I think we're jumping ahead to do something that some regard as more political, and I, I can't support this under these conditions. And I don't think it's fair to the members of our community. They don't even know what's going on and that this is being taken away from them. And I think if we're do, making a change of people's lives, we need to give them a chance to go to a hearing and express how they feel about all these regulations. Thank you. Further discussion? Um, yes, Nick. Yes. Nick Boivin, Precinct 7. Could we go to the issue of enforcement and just clarifying a couple enforcement provisions? Mm -hmm. um, there were some comments made earlier that I wanted to pick up on, and I'd like to look at two sections. The first is 8.13.3.2. To me, that's the meat of the enforcement here. So, and, and this is a definitional concern I have more than any. I, I view this as a kind of a, a technical point about how the definitions, how definitions work together. So, all right, so single use plastic checkout bags, that's defined above in 813.2.7 as a bag less than three mils thick. Um, so, that's pretty objective to me. Um, shall not be and then used or other or sold for checkout. Uh, checkout's not defined, but I think that's reasonably clear. Or other purposes. It's that or other purposes piece that I wanted to, to focus on for a moment. And then at the retail establishment. So as, as I understand the comments that were made earlier in the discussion with the town manager and a couple other people at the beginning of this in the presentation was that the, the goal here is to have the DPW uh, enforcement provisions applied to the retail establishments and not to the shoppers. Is that, is that a fair understanding? Correct. Okay. So to achieve that here, my concern is that in order to violate this section, a three mil thick or, you know, we'll say a non-compliant, a bag with a non-compliant thickness need only be used for any purpose at a retail establishment, period, by anybody, as I read it. I mean, that's not the intent, but that's, I think you could read it that way. Well, and, and this is, yeah, this is where I'm going. So the next section down has a carve-out for individuals, but that carve-out is, is based on the use of bags by consumers, right? So here, here, here's a proposed fix. If you go up to 813.2.7, and so this term, single-use plastic checkout bags, the, the proposal for an amendment would be where you see comma, any plastic bag, insert the word checkout, capital C. Okay, any plastic checkout, big C, after the word plastic. And the reason I do that is if you look at the definition of checkout bag, those apply only to carry out bags provided by a store. Therefore, the enforcement provision, or I'm sorry, not the enforcement, but the, um, the scope of the regulation in 813.3.2, maybe going too fast here, slow down, checkout needs to be capitalized there. Because it's, it's a nested definition uh, above. Right. And so what that does is it turns single-use plastic checkout bags to be only those bags that are provided by a store, which means that only a store can violate that ordinance, not an individual who's shopping. We still have the carve-outs for people once they receive the bag from the store and they're going around the store and get, picking up their vegetables and all that. Mm -hmm. I understand those carve-outs. Um, but this would be my, my proposal. So that, that's one piece of it. And then the second and final piece is below, 813.4.1. Four one. Yes. 813, 4.1, enforcement. So 
the director shall have the authority to administer and enforce this bylaw. The proposal that I thought of was against violations by retail establishments. Okay, I'm only going to take, are you Only making, one at a time, do you want to split those? Yes. It's the same concern about enforcement, but we can do it separately okay. if you like. So you, you are making the motion on the checkout, right? Uh, yeah, on the definition change. I'm happy to. Right. Eight point, have, 13 point, the new 18 point. And I can come back seven. for the other one. Okay, we'll come back Thank to you. you. Okay. Uh, okay, is there a second on that? Second. Okay, further discussion on that proposed amendment? None appearing. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? And the motion carries. We'll come back to you for your second. That was quick. If only government was always so quick, in a good way. All right. So 813 4.1. So the second proposed amendment is after the first sentence where you have section 8.13 and then period, end of the first line, far right. I would insert some language. As a part of that? Yes, after the 13, but inside the period. I would insert a phrase, uh, and maybe there's a better way to do this that others can think of, but uh, my suggestion would be against violations by a retail establishment, and you would capitalize retail and capitalize establishment because it's a defined term. and then capital E in establishments, make it a defined term. And the purpose of this amendment is to just ensure, in, to clarify what I believe is the purpose we've already articulated is that we're not going after shoppers here. Okay, is there a second? Second. Further discussion on that proposed amendment? Is your hand? I thought I saw it. Yes, okay. Dimitri Sekris, Precinct 4. A question about that. Does retail establishment include restaurants? So if I have a doggy bag to take home, am I, is a restaurant under this change going yeah. to be allowed to use the cheap plastic bags? No, a restaurant is listed specifically. Okay, thank you. I couldn't find it and then I just thought I'd ask. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes, in the middle. Mike Barry, Precinct 3. Um, the language just, I know you came off, of the, off the top of your head. Um, and administer enforcement of violations, or enforce violations of Section 8.1.3 by retail establishments. Okay. Is, any, ob any objection to that being part of the uh, amendment? Not appearing. Okay, any further discussion on the, yes, come on down. So, so what was the change there? Was that a change? Would, would you repeat that to make sure we got it right? Would, would you go to the microphone? Uh, violations of. And then cross, strike against violation. Uh, yeah, strike that. Okay. There you go. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, in the back. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Go ahead, and then we'll come back to you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Tom Grant from Precinct 4. Uh, I understand we want to be super clear that this is just ag against retail establishments. My, my question is, is there anything that the director could administer or enforce against anything besides retail establishments in the bylaw? So maybe this is just superfluous because there's nothing for them to administer or enforce against anyone else. Mr. Meares. I'm, go I'm going to suggest a rewrite in a moment, but to, I'll try to answer the question first. Um, no, there are no provisions here that are intended to apply to anybody other than, than um, retail establishments. So the concept here is right. This is a bit clearer. But I'm going to propose a change in it anyway. 
myself have the authority to administer stick in um, section 8.13. There is minister section 8.13. force against, so insert the word against again, right? Enforce against violations thereof and get rid of section 8.1. How's that? Is that okay with the original mover? Okay, any objections from anyone else making that the proposed amendment? Not appearing. Okay, further discussion on this proposed amendment? Yes. Friedman, Mr. Friedman. Um, well, well I, I like clarity in, in, in my bylaws just as anybody else. I also appreciate succinctness. Um, and I think that the, what this, well, I gotta look around here. Uh, this administrative and enforcement section discusses is a uh, violation of the regulation. And the regulation is very clear that uh, it applies to real retail establishments. So I, I don't think adding by retail establishments gets us anything because the, the actual regulation is all directed at retail establishments. So uh, I think it's, it's nice, but it's it's not totally necessary. Yes. Uh, Nick Boivin, Precinct Seven. My my concern about not having this, and people can read this differently, is that if we go back, it's the word at, in eight point thirteen, point three point two. The violation need only occur in this regulation at any retail establishment, not by, just at, in the, in the building. That's why I was proposing the Second Amendment to clarify that at is still at. The alternative would be to not do this amendment and change at to by any retail establishment, 813.3.2, but that seemed more restrictive to me. But, so I'll leave this on the, on the floor. Okay. Further discussion on the proposed amendment. Was Ms. Webb, did you have a hand? Yes. I support this. The, um, the reason I like this is because the thing I was envisioning is the stockpile of these bags that I happen to have at home. What if I brought them to the grocery store with me to use before I started buying more reusable bags? And I think, that I, I mean, clearly, Probably nobody's going to report me. But this covers that so that if somebody wanted to use up several times as many of these bags before they then dispose of them, I wouldn't be in violation and I wouldn't be fined. So. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes. Ms. Kane? Um, I just want to ask a ba very basic question. Um, I thought the main reason for this was point because, because I. Excuse me, point of order. I, yes. Can the individual please identify herself? Oh, yes. What? Could you identify yourself? What is it? Uh, could you tell your name and precinct, please? Oh, precinct six, Diana Kane. Thank you. Um, I thought the basic question or the basic reason for this was because of the trash trucks that this, uh, these very, very thin plastic bags are, are catching up into the... Um, uh, we, asked, we are speaking strictly on the amendment right now. Is yeah, that... I know. Okay. But I think we've gone a little bit too far. <laughs> but how do we know that a heavier plastic bag... I'm against all plastic bags, but, you know, I don't think we can get that far. And I'm certainly willing to state that, that that is a real reason if it is 
ruining the grind up process of our trash trucks. Uh, and it is a problem. And so I would, be a, I would certainly be a, in favor of this also. But as far as, you know, the animals in the woods and things, um, any plastic is bad, you know, that... Again, that we're talking bad. strictly on the proposed okay. amendment right now. Okay. okay, all right. But I think we've gone far too far on wasting a lot of trees on, on, uh, on uh, you know, all, so many regulations. Okay, uh, Mr. Russell, I think you were, had your hand up earlier? Oh, okay. All right, further discussion? Uh, let's see. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? None appearing. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor of the proposed amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Okay, Mr. Russell. I have two items, uh, Jack Russell, Precinct 3. I have two items. One is a knit. I'd like to go to 81334. You forgot to cross out the 4 and make it 3.3. .3. It now reads 43. Okay, I think we can accept that, unless there's any okay. objection. <laughs> okay, Mr. Now Russell. Now something a little, little a slightly more substantive. One of the main advantages of plastic bags are the handles. And uh, whenever I have enough uh, 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 purchases to fill a, a, a uh, recyclable paper bag, I have to have put it in a plastic bag so that we can handle it. So I would like to make an amendment to, let me get the right page, 8.13.2.4. Uh, and after, it says, a re it, this is under definitions, recyclable plastic bag, a paper bag, comma, preferably with handles, comma. This does not require it. I don't want to put anybody out of business due to the extra cost of handles. Calareso makes out well with it, and they have handles on their paper bags. I'd like to put that in as a, as a preference. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? None appearing. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Further discussion on does the main? Carry. Pardon does me? Or, does or does not? I'm carry. Just, did it carry? Did no, it did not carry. carry. Did not, did not carry. carry. Let's call for count then. Okay, all those in favor of the proposed amendment, please. Oh, I need to uh, pick counters. Let's see, Mr. Brown, would you do the right? Uh, Mr. Crook, would you do the right center? Uh, Mr. Rushworth, would you do the, my left center? And Ms. Russell, would you do the left center? Okay, all those in favor of the proposed amendment, please rise. Nineteen. Nine. Nine. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Ten. Ten. And those opposed, please rise. Seventeen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Also thirteen. Thirteen. 
the vote being 61 in the affirmative, 68 in the negative, the motion does not carry. Further discussion on the main motion? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Tom Grant, Precinct 4. I want to be, if Mr. Russell's first comment was nitpicky, this is super nitpicky. Did, did you actually delete the four? I look like you added a space I, you next know, to I had it. A little, I couldn't tell if it was deleting or not. You I know, think you added you, a space next to it. But uh, I know it. But I, so I'll, let me try it again. <laughs> try it a different way. So I don't know what it's doing there, but it's not. I think, I think we got the point, Straight you know. What is it supposed to be? <laughs> It's supposed to be 13-3. All right. The four is correct. While we're working on that, further discussion on the main motion. Okay. Yes, in the far. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator Caldwell, Precinct 7. Um, part of the instructional motion, you were uh, instructed to uh, consult with all stakeholders in Reading or consult with stakeholders in Reading. And the, the list of establishments that you said you spoke with were predominantly large chain uh, establishments, big, huge corporations that can absorb these compliance costs. And the three small businesses that you talked to, one of them was Calaresos, and everyone in town knows they use paper bags. Um, my concern is that you didn't seem to, there's no restaurants on that list, there are no convenience stores on that list. I'm just wondering if you actually took those types of businesses into consideration with this or you just essentially said you, you will comply. We, we, actually, we interviewed specifically the ones that I listed. We didn't like omit somebody intentionally. But, but you're right. I mean, there are a lot of businesses in Reading that we didn't talk to. Further discussion? Yes. Right Nicholas Worth, Precinct 7. Um, so I think the key question on this issue is whether this will successfully help the environment. And I think there's two issues on that. One is the global uh, greenhouse gas emissions produced by the bags, and the other is the litter question, which was brought up in your presentation. Uh, I, like many of you, read the uh, paper at the back, and I want to co um, confirm some of its claims, and I went and found a paper from uh, Berkeley, which analyzed California's ban, uh, which has a lot of information, and to preface this, this article did come down in favor of the ban. Um, they said over the life cycle analysis of the bags, uh, a cotton bag has to be used 173 times to justify its environmental impact, a paper bag has to be used four times, and an equivalent heavy duty, thick plastic bag has to be used five times. I don't think it's inconceivable that a cotton bag could be used that many times, but I believe the paper and heavy duty plastic bags would not be used that many times, and therefore on the issue of emissions, would not be a benefit. And I think people have to ask whether a cotton bag will be used 173 or more times uh, to decide for themselves whether they think this will be environmentally beneficial. So on the litter question, there were a couple of issues you brought up. One was the storm drains, which has essentially been dismissed by the Department of Public Works. Um, the, there is the visible blight from uh, litter and then there is animal damage, and um, I believe there was a few other things, but I want to... Recycling equipment. Yeah. Yes, recycling equipment. I was wondering if you could provide us, to the best of your ability, um, either you or the Department of Public Works, on costs caused by the damage to recycling equipment, like actually the costs and the frequency of that happening. If you can provide us with knowledge about in our local waterways, and in our local, uh, what are the cleanup costs associated with these bags? Um, the, the article from Berkeley did say that it was uh, half a percent of the waste was plastic bags. Uh, sorry, half a percent 
was what the waste was after the ban, and it was 1% before the ban, so it was a half a percent reduction in litter um, in California, but this is Massachusetts, so it is a different thing. So I think for us to have an informed decision, not whether this is part of a, a movement in Massachusetts, but whether this is actually just this town making a decision, a beneficial choice for us to make, I think we would, we would do well to get information on what the local numbers are for what the damages to recycling caused by these bags and what the local problem with this litter is uh, since the storm drains does not seem to actually be an issue. Thank you. Mr. Z. Um, so, so I can tell you something. Uh, you know, we, we, don't, we don't own this equipment, right, in Reading. This is, this is where, so we take our recycling to one of the services. The, the only uh, information I saw on that was actually uh, that the recycling equipment and, and, and the picture that was in, included with it, uh, picture a, a, a series of, of rollers, almost like a disc, you know, like a farm disc, you know, but, mm -hmm. but a long uh, pole, maybe 15 feet wide, that was completely wrapped in, in plastic, plastic bags. And the, and the, explained it, what the ex explanation was that they have to stop the operation uh, each day and go in and remove those bags from the equipment by hand. So they're basically just, you know, p people are going in and pulling it, the, the, the bags off the, off the machinery because they're, they're wrapped around the axle, so to speak. That's, I don't have, that's all, I, I think that's as much information as I have. All right, thank you for that information. Um, does the Department of Public Works have any comment on that? Mr. Zager? No, no, that's correct. We have a contract for recycling with JRM, a 10 year contract. And uh, as you know, uh, recently we went, uh, it was two years ago, we went from a, 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 a dual stream to a single stream recycling. And so now their equipment is such that it goes to the recycling center in Peabody, and we don't pay for any costs as far as. I mean, they know they have a problem, and that's why we don't, we, we ask everybody not to put the recyclings in plastic bag because it really messes up their, their system at the plant. Uh, but there's no direct cost for us as far as that part of it. If, if these bags were removed, if we got rid of them completely, would there be another type of plastic that would necessitate the same stop at the end of the day to clean the equipment? Uh, I'm not sure, I, in terms of if there was a different type of plastic? Yes, besides these specific types of bags, is there another type of plastic that gets into the recycle stream? Since it's just a one-stop thing, uh, if there's any other type of plastic. Good, in, good question. I, I'm not eliminated. sure. There may be, but I, I'm really not sure. All right, thank you. Further discussion by anybody who's not spoken yet? Mr. Arena? John Arena, Precinct 1. I have a proposed slight clarification under, I'm not sure what the numbers are now, 8.13.3.4? Yes, right there, thank you. Um, the three sections above it make, make clear the regulation applies to a retail establishment, if any retail establishment, if a retail establishment. But this section does not, and I wonder if it's better amended to say the following are exempt blah, 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 bags provided by retail establishment, establishments for their customers too. As it's written at the moment, it would imply that it wouldn't uh, in your two retail establishments, but I think its intent was. So that's one, and uh, if I can be permitted to. Uh, we do one at a time. Okay, uh, okay. Um, you want to. For we their have customers too. Customers too, or actually it's. Or, or just, it's already there, used by customers too. You, you, can, you can get rid of those. Keep the used. Yeah, keep the used and get rid of four there. It's, it's already comprehended. Just control Z, control Z. One more. Uh, and just delete four there. Oops. Too many. Now control Y. Okay, is there a second to that? 
amendment. Second, Mr. Arena. Um, you all set? I'm all set. Oh, okay. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes. Bob Mandel, Precinct 6. Um, not so much on the amendment, but on this section, if I'm allowed. Um, when they say bags provided by the retail establishment, now can these bags be those three millimeter bags, or do they have to be the, um, the four millimeter um, marine established uh, disposable bags? Yeah, so the bags in this section would be any bags that they're providing. And, and, the, and these, these bags are not subject to the uh, restrictions in this bylaw. So, so these bags could be those same three millimeter bags that we're getting rid of in for the for the for the regular consumer. Not, not three millimeter, but the not three mil, but the uh, the, the three, thin bags. The three mil. Yeah. So, so, so this section would actually not get rid of those three mil bags, correct? Or am I wrong? Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. That's uh, just a point. Of right. Okay. So if, if if similar bags were used in you know in the in the produce section, right. you know when, like when you're collecting your so they're vegetables, still allowed be, when I okay. when I get my thin bags and I put my tomatoes in or That's something. correct. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion on the proposed amendment. Yes. Oh no. Okay. Uh, yes. Nick Blevin, Precinct 7. So I appreciate the, the goal here to bring greater internal coherence to this paragraph from the ones before. Um, if we scroll up just a little bit, I think there's only two types of bags that are actually re regulated by this bylaw right now. One is the single-use plastic checkout bag. And as amended, that is a subset of the second kind, which is checkout bags whereas this exemption is broader than that. It's just bags, any bags, laundry bags, trash bags, any bags, backpacks. Um, so my only concern with that, I mean, I guess it's okay to have an exemption that's broader than the law or the regulation itself, but in terms of coherence, if we do vote for this amendment, I would come back later and propose an amendment to limit bags to just those bags that are actually being regulated by the ordinance itself so it's clear that the first two are uh, identifying types of bags that retail establishments can't provide, use in certain ways, and then this exemption carves out an exception for consumers just to make that parallel construction. So I'm not for or against it at this point. I'm willing to listen to other arguments, but if this does pass, I'd want a further amendment. Okay. Thanks. I'll about that. Further discussion? I'm advised by town council there's one uh, adjustment that needs to be made. As it's written at the moment, it would actually preclude customers from bringing in such non-compliant bags. It would provide now for the retail establishments, but disallow the consumer. So I would um, suggest a friendly amendment, which would say bags provided by retail establishments um, or used by their customers, too. And that, that now comprehends both. This is why we leave this to lawyers. OK. Is there any objection to making that part of his motion? And appearing. Uh, further discussion on the proposed amendment? None appearing? Is there a hand? Yes. Roy Benjamin, Precinct 1. Uh, just a question. What other bags are there besides bags provided by a retail establishment or used by customers? Uh, my two cents would be to not approve this amendment, leave the language as it was. I think it means the same thing. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Mr. Arena. Roy, thanks for your comment. I, I see your point. The intent here was in the exception section to make clear that the uh, there were valid exceptions for the use of these uh, non-compliant bags. Uh, I'm open to any suggestion. My only concern was that as originally constructed, it seemed to not um, grant that right to the retail establishment. But if there's an alternate construction, I'm fine with it. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? 
All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Mr. Arena, you have a second one? I have uh, two more slight suggestions. As the subject matter is primarily about the reduction of um, plastic in the definitions 8.13.2.4, I wonder if the authors would entertain a, um, an amendment to um, allow to not require the use of the um, post-consumer recycled paper content. You might encourage it, but I, and I don't know enough about the unintended consequences, but I, I wonder if, if the focus is on reduction of, of plastic, is the obligation to include um, the recycle component a burden by itself, or does it apply in all cases like food establishments or other instances? So it Mr. Zeke? This is typical. It's just typical of the bylaws across the state. Uh, the, the implication is that this bag, you know, the paper bag is maybe not quite as, as valuable as if it was uh, included no, no recycled material. So there's, a, there's, that, there's that little bit of, of uh, you know, sensitivity to the environment, I guess, that, it's, that it includes, it includes uh, recycled content. That, that's not, that is not, it's, it's that wording and that requirement are, co are very common. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, further discussion, Mr. Barnes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Jonathan Barnes, Precinct 5. Uh, in um, section 8.13.3.1, I think. The new, yes. Um, I guess also to, to a certain degree uh, in defense of recyclable paper bags. Um, actually, just one quick question. I, I know that you would, uh, just from reading the, uh, the warrant that you were going, intending to eliminate the marine degradable plastic bag, I was not aware until today that you were also eliminating the uh, recyclable um, plastic bag. Compostable. You, sorry? We eliminated the compostable. I'm sorry, compostable. Was that just to eliminate, uh, to further eliminate the use of plastic? It was, it was because, because uh, most of the, of the new bag laws are, are streamlining in this way, focusing on thickness and, re, and reuse and, re, and recycling and staying away from requirements on what the bags look like or what materials they're made of. Or for that matter, you know, actually having a three mil compostable bag is not maybe obvious that it could happen that way because compostability requires that it de decompose within six months. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's just seemed like a, an exercise for the businesses uh, that didn't, kind of got off the mark. You know, if, if, we're, if we run into the situation where we're finding businesses, uh, you know, are, are sort of pushing the, the border on this. Maybe we want to revisit the materials question, um, but I don't think it's necessary. Okay, I, thank you. I didn't have a huge issue with it. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. yeah. The 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 point that I that I was more interested in is um, in the in that same section uh, where you say retail or where we would say retail establishments are encouraged to make reusable bags available for free <clears throat> or for sale to customers at a reasonable price. Um, you're, you're referring clearly to the reusable bags, which are, I assume, the reusable checkout um, bags, uh, largely made out of some fabric material. Right, correct. Uh, but, I, and I appreciate that, and I know it's just an encouragement provision rather than a requirement, but the point is uh, that they should either be, we wish that they would either be provided for free or a reasonable cost. Uh, however, the, um, the same statement is not made with respect to uh, the paper bags, uh, which I, for one, uh, would still want to keep, and I, I certainly the words that are in a bylaw are important, but also uh, are the words that are not in a bylaw, and I, I for one, would, would want to include something. So um, I would like to add there, uh, in, the se in the sentence that starts, retail establishments are encouraged, um, I would want to add to continue to provide recyclable paper bags for free. And then to go on to say, and to make reusable bags available for free or for sale to customers at a reasonable price. 
So where it says retail establishments are encouraged, I would add to continue to provide recyclable paper bags for free. To continue? Yes. To continue to provide recyclable paper bags. My understanding is they all already do. If they don't, then we could just say to provide recyclable paper bags but for free. And continue to provide you wanted the words for free in there as well? Yes. Yes, okay. And, okay. Is that what you wanted? That's something yes, now. and then uh, end, after the word end, to make reusable bags available for free. So add the word to after end. There you go. Okay. Is there a second Thank to you. that motion? Second. Okay. Mr. Barnes? So, uh, can I, I, as, 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 you've well, made. let me hear. Okay. Response. Mr. Zeke? So the, the, the point of that statement is to is is to provide a source of recyclable bags. In other words, the idea being that you would go to the store and you could get a recyclable bag, and you could then use that bag to recycle. Not that not that you could get a. I mean, excuse me, not a, a reusable bag. Not that not so much the, the the recyclable thing is kind of the it's kind of the the out. It's, here's a recyclable bag. It's probably going to end up in the trash. Uh, you know, the, the idea was that this would be sure. a source of reusable bags for you as a customer, and that's why that encouragement is there. That's the, I mean, that, that we're specifically saying, why don't you provide reusable bags to your customers who will reuse bags, not, and not, um, so, so that's, the, that's why that doesn't say anything about recycle. And I, and I appreciate that, and I agree with that sentiment. My, my concern and I wouldn't want to undermine or, or, uh, or diminish that, but my concern would be uh, a, an establishment that might be reading that to say, uh, I am required to use uh, recyclable paper bags or reusable checkout bags, and I'm encouraged to continue to provide only the recyclable, I'm sorry, only the reusable bags for free of sale, so I could start charging for the paper bags. And I would just like to also express if you're going to continue to use them, I, it would be my wish that they be encouraged uh, to provide them for free and mm -hmm. to not consider the absence of any language in reference to them to enable them to want to charge for paper bags. Thank you. Mr. Mon. Thank you, Jamie Mon, Precinct 4, and I'd like to propose a friendly uh, modification, if Mr. Barnes agree, to add uh, boxes, recyclable, recyclable paper boxes, as well as bags, if that's an agreement. Are you in agreement with that? Okay. Want to add paper bags and boxes? More boxes. Okay. Then we will... Uh, do you want to propose an amendment to his amendment? No, okay. Further discussion on the proposed amendment. Mr. Struble. Uh, Jeff Struble, Precinct 7, uh, yet another nit. Uh, I think you should capitalize recyclable because uh, that's, that's the standard we're using on the rest of the bylaw. Okay, no problem, I assume. <laughs> okay, further discussion on the proposed amendment. Mr. Tuttle. Mr. Tuttle. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Dave Tuttle of Precinct 3. I think this is getting a little bit out of hand. I would suggest that instead of the proposed insertion, we would rather uh, do not insert those words and change reusable bags to suitable bags so that retail establishments are encouraged to make suitable bags available for free or for sale to customers at a reasonable price. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes. Dan Dua, Precinct 3. Um, <clears throat> I don't offer paper bags at my convenience store. Um, and I'd also like to know what else you propose that I give away for free. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Mr. Barnes. Is that, a, is that a comment about continue? Is that the source of that comment? 
can continue. Uh, I, I respect that, that point that in recognition of that, I, if I could, Mr. Moderator, I would revise my amendment to say rather than to continue to provide or encourage to provide. So if they don't already provide and they don't want to, they don't have to. Okay, is there any objection to taking out the words continue to? Not appearing, we'll take those out. Okay, further discussion on the proposed amendment? Not appearing. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. We're now back to the main motion. Uh, yes, Mr. Lynch. Bob Lynch, Precinct 6. Has anybody asked the health department about cross-contamination from the back of the car, the bags into the carriage? the food into the carriage, and then the food up onto the checkout. Say again. Cross-contamination uh, of the food uh -huh. from a foreign form on the bags. Right now, do you have any idea of the percentage of people that use those reusable uh, bags compared to compelling everybody to go to them now over cross-contamination? Of a, so of a bag that you bring in, you mean, was contaminated from somewhere else? Yeah, you don't know what I used that bag for, or what my kids used that bag right, for. But you, right, you, you, you might, right, but I don't know. Has anybody asked the health department about that? No. Well, that's amazing, in my opinion. Further discussion? Any, uh, we get, we're up to two hours now. Is there anybody who hasn't spoken yet? Yes, we, yeah, oh, Ms. Doctor. Uh, Nancy Doctor, Precinct One. Um, thank you very much for this article. Um, I think this is really just about changing behaviors. Uh, a few years ago, when the town mandated uh, curbside recycling, mandated that, we all learned very quickly to put out our red bins if we wanted our trash picked up. This is just changing our behavior. We might be joining 58 other communities, but there are 40 countries that have actually banned these uh, plastic bags. And most of these countries are what we might consider second or third world countries. Bangladesh banned paper bags in uh, 2002. Last month, I don't know how many of you saw in the globe, Kenya banned plastic bags. The, the fine for carrying, manufacturing, or importing, importing plastic bags in Kenya is between 19 and $38,000, up to four years in jail. So this is peanuts. We need to pass this. It makes sense. Um, someone. I think a uh, former speaker talked about the concern about plastics. People may not actually know, but the chemicals used in plastics, and these plastic bags do not biodegrade, have been linked to dogs losing their fertility, which you may not care about, but that's highly correlated with human beings' fertility. Last year, there was a study published that only 25% of men had what we considered good quality, healthy sperm. This is a simple, simple thing that we should pass. It goes beyond littering and killing small animals. Cents for their three mil bags. What do they do with those bags? They brought them home and used, used them the way we all use our thin mill bags. They use them as liners in the waste basket. What else did they do with those bags? They used them for dog waste, cat waste, cat litter. They ended up, and they actually found out that a lot of the people took those three mil bags, and what do they do with them? They chucked them out. Why? Because they didn't want the inconvenience of what was a very poor approach to a problem with bags and plastic that needs to be recycled. They gladly threw them out, went to the store, and paid the extra 10 cents. Look, people are willing to pay how much? Five cents a can when they buy soda. No one complains about that. We gladly go ahead and pay a fee if it advanced better site recycling. Look, I'm in the recycling industry. 
And I can tell you that even those reused bags are not the solution. They're made out of fabric. When I go to a transfer station, you know what I see? Segregated rubbish. Because recycling, recycling, recycling is a solution for plastics. That is the ultimate end of all the plastics we produce. Unless you want to incinerate them or put them into a landfill. You go to, you go to a recycling center and what do you see? Mountains of mattresses. You know why? They're classified as hazardous waste. What does that tell us? It tells us that the recycling industry, it's their business to be adaptable and flexible. What else do I see? I see carpet in a separate pile, a mountain of carpets. Why? Because it requires special technology to recycle it. These reusable bags, where are they going to go? Probably in the carpet pile. Because the cost of producing them and the cost of recycling them is far greater than these simple plastics. Listen, another thing about the recycling industry that people don't understand is this, that when you diminish the supply of any particular commodity, you undermine the cost effectiveness of recycling that material. Uh, I'm, really, I'm really disgusted that we, as a town meeting, have actually entertained a one-sided approach to this without looking at the, without examining I mean intelligently examining the facts and figures about recycling as a better choice. I'm one of those people who likes to think outside the box. And right now, tonight, I want to say that all of us are lost inside this box that, that one of our town committees has placed us in. And what this does is it finally it condemns every one of us to making an inferior choice about a problem that should be addressed through recycling. I'll say it again, plastics are here to stay until a better alternative material is ever, ever found. And you're not going to find that in the foreseeable future. If we don't feed the technology and support the technology and the means to increase, improve recycling, then we're going to go ahead and dead end more plastics in the landfills and in incineration, and in the ocean, in the environment, and everywhere else. I agree with what the woman said earlier that yeah, we adapted when we had to go ahead and recycle. We have bins, we separate cardboard. You don't have to talk about we separ uh, segregating uh, cardboard or making it recyclable. It already is. That's in the interest of, of these people who are in the waste industry. Um, the fact of the matter is that we produce millions of pounds, oh, to finish my last point, people will adjust their behavior once they're told, hey look, we gotta take those light mill, Plastic bags, we got to recycle them, we got to separate them, we'll compress them. There's all a, a million and one different ways we can handle this problem. You could have bag drives, you could pay a fee, a surcharge to go ahead and support advanced technology. I want to quickly allude to an article that appeared in one of my recycling magazines. Hold on a minute here, please. Oh, now you the title of the article reads, New Technology Enables Plastic to be Recycled into Nearly New Quality. Technology removes virtually all contaminants. P&G Labs, I assume that's Procter & Gamble, I'm not sure, innovated this new uh, recycling uh, technology, which they licensed to Pure Cycle. And what they found was that they already have already got up and running a small-scale plant that will begin operation in January 2018. The full-scale plant will open in 2020. The global PP market, polyethylene, is valued at more than $80 billion, according to Transparency Market Research, and it is apt to reach $133 billion by the year 2023. It's used in automobile interiors, food beverages, packaging, consumer good packaging, electronics, construction materials, home furnishings, on and on, and that just proves my point. Plastics are here to say. Recycling is the big answer to the total issue. We have just a tunnel vision approach here with this bag, with this bag ban. It's ridiculous. I think, honestly, I think we're fools. And let me go back to my real proposal. I ask that, that we have uh, a motion to go ahead and um, indefinitely postpone this, this article. And here's why I say so. There is insufficient public awareness of this proposal to begin with. When I've asked people about it, you know what they say here in Reading? What ban on plastic bags? That's how ill-informed they are. When I went to that public meeting on, what was it, October 24th, 
to a half a dozen people there. That's not awareness. Uh, this should be a ballot question. This, this, this article has such an impact on every household in Reading that this should be on the ballot and allow everyone in the community to do two things. Have an adequate opportunity, opportunity to understand the larger issue and its consequences so that they can make an intelligent decision about something that affects them so extensively. Again, this is a one-sided approach in a problem. The issue really is a, a debate between banning and recycling. Recycling is the way to go. This is a dead end solution. And they've actually found from studies, I say again, that more plastic actually ends up in the environment and it's more difficult to recycle because the mill is greater and the weight is greater. And numbers can mislead people or present and clarify a, a, an issue. Instead of 1,500 bags a year that households use, what does that translate into in terms of pounds? Actually, these plastic bags are minuscule when it comes to recycling, when measured by pounds. Um, we have a point of order? Anyway, he has been going eight minutes. He still has two minutes to go. Thank you. OK. I really, I really don't, in one sense, I'll tell you this to shift gears here. I really don't even want to debate the merits or the demerits of this article. One side of me wants to go ahead and advance one other interest that I think we as town meeting members should be aware of. If we're truly a representative body, there are times when we should acknowledge that there are some decisions that rightly belong to the voters. To do otherwise would force all the voters to forfeit the opportunity to be better informed before they're given a chance to vote on the issue. And for that reason, I, 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 I move that we indefinitely postpone this article. Okay, do we have a second on the indefinite postponement? Second. Okay, next we will discuss indefinite postponement. A vote on indefinite postponement effectively kills the motion. So we are now discussing indefinite postponement. Further discussion, yes. Angela Binda, Precinct 5. First of all, I want to thank you and the committee because I don't think I've ever seen anything come to town meeting this well researched, this well written. I'm sorry that there were so many changes to it. I think that it was better the way you brought it. Um, as far as indefinite postponement, you're a town committee, correct? Correct. You, you post meetings? Correct. You abide by the open meeting law? Yes, we do. Anyone is able to come to your meetings. Everyone who was here in town meeting, who was here a year ago, knew that this would be coming, correct? Were there, we all got our warrant. The warrant was printed in the paper. Were there any letters in the paper or anywhere from anyone, town meeting member, who got their warrant, who was aware that this was coming up? Were there any letters in the newspaper? I didn't read any, I get the Chronicle. I didn't read any saying, hey, town folk, this issue is coming up. You should be aware of it. I'm a town meeting member. Let me know what you think. I didn't, I didn't see, see any. any. There, there hasn't been any. And it's been said before, people are partly responsible for informing themselves. The town can only do so much in far, in, 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 as far as informing people. I attended a tax classification meeting recently. I wrote a letter to the selectmen. I wrote a letter, I put it in the paper. I said, this is coming up to encourage other people to come to. If people thought that this was a big issue, any town meeting member could have told their neighbors, any town meeting member, anyone in town who knew about this could have written a letter, could have done something to do that. So I, I, I know people who've known about it. I've been talking about it. I've been asking people what they think about it. I think it's time to vote. Thank you. Further discussion on an indefinite postponement? Yes, in the far corner. Uh, thank you, Bruce McKenzie, Precinct 8. 
Um, I believe the motion for indefinite postponement is out of order because he gave it at the end of his, of what he was saying. He should have said it at the beginning. No, indefinite postponement is not like uh, a motion to table or something like that. It's a d debatable discussion. But thank you for the comment. Yes, on the edge. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Dan Dua, Precinct 3. Um, I agree that it should be indefinitely postponed uh, because uh, I, as a convenience store owner, I was not interviewed in this. I had to go, I knew about it because I'm a town meeting member, so I went to the um, presentation a, a few weeks ago. Not, uh, earlier it, it came up, there was no other convenience store owners that were even um, asked about it. So I, I don't think that, um, I don't think we're adequately informed. Um, the other thing is uh, the three milliliter bags, millimeter bags would be four times the cost of the current bags that I use. I, I can't get them for 10 cents. It would cost me uh, 11 and a half cents uh, from, I, I'm, I'm a small owner. I'm sure Market Basket gets them and they probably make a profit when they sell them for 10, but I can't. And I really can't afford to give them away for free either, so I would probably end up having to charge. So I, it's just not convenient for a convenience store. I guess to have, you know, I'd, I'd prefer to have the original bags that I use. Thank you. Further discussion on indefinite postponement? Yes, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Ian Brown, Precinct 8. Um, I want to echo the fact that um, we all knew this topic was coming up, and it's, it is, it's probably up to us to spread that word, but it's also up to the townspeople to pay attention. Uh, to that note, I would indicate the cameras at the back of the room that film each and every town meeting. Uh, I guarantee you right now, there's no one, absolutely no one, that watches that. <laughs> Zero people. Right? Regardless of right, how, we, how often we tell them, yo, you pay attention to town meeting, they have to inform themselves to actually care enough to pay attention. Otherwise, it's, it's not our job to make them show up. Right? They have to care on their own. Thank you. Further discussion on indefinite postponement. Um, yes, on the, yes. Mr. Simmons. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Harry Simmons, Precinct 4. Uh, we've, we've gone through a little bit of a presentation. Uh, the presentation was done very well. It's very clear. There was nothing in there about anti-recycling. This is not about, this, this is about a simple thing that the purpose, if you read the purpose of this bylaw, it's pretty straightforward. It's not proposing to save a lot of money. It's not, it, there's a lot of things it's not proposing to do. Just listen to what it said. And it's been pretty clear what was put out there. Um, it's a small start. There's not a big, big fines. There's not a big deal on enforcement. It's a, it's a light, light, load on the whole town. It's a small step just to make it a little bit better. Having bags in the trees as you drive by. Uh, at the meeting that these people were at, uh, it was reported that people that were there that went down to the Cape where this has been implemented, they're happy. It's, it's improved their life. So it's a small step. It's to encourage uh, a leading con to do things that are good for the town, that promote the town. Recycling, we recycle those little bags. You know, you have to stuff them in and take care of them. No big deal, it's another little bag, and you recycle it. This is not against recycling. Most of this town is for recycling. We've done a good job in recycling here. Let's keep doing it, I agree with that. Uh, so in regards to this postponement, I think the the uh, information is there, and we can all see it, and I hope that we do vote for this bylaw. Further discussion on indefinite postponement. As people who haven't spoken yet, I'm trying to, uh, okay, yes, right there, yes. Oh, 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 oh go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> you, 
Yes. yes. The, the, the woman, yes. I'm, I'm Megan Fiddler Carey from Precinct One, and I just wanted to respond that I had the exact opposite effect, that um, I had neighbors coming up to me who knew that I was in town meeting, but I didn't ask them what their thoughts were about the bag ban. They came up and said they wanted me to know their stance and wanted to make sure that I voted uh, for the bag ban so that... Um, so I just wanted to say that I had the exact opposite experience, that my neighbors were coming, seeking me out. And thank you for the presentation. Great. Further discussion on, uh, from people who haven't spoken? Um, None appearing? Okay, Ms. Kane. Uh, Diana Kane, um, um, Precinct 6. Um, I think, first of all, it's too large and too, you know, not much if it were to the point, I think people could, might, might understand it better. But I think the point um, by the Phillips was well taken that um, plastics are here to stay. I can, um, and I have more, I have more recyclables in my red, I have two, two red bins. I don't know where I got the, I think I got one by mistake somewhere, <laughs> but anyway. I have two, and I have more in that than I have in my trash, you know? So <clears throat> the problem is packaging. You know, that's the basic problem. But I can speak for a <clears throat> red tomato, which I have delivery three times a week. <laughs> and uh, um, they have none of these uh, thin plastic bags at all. However, they have the most beautiful containers that I can't throw away because I put them in my dishwasher and dish them, and I save them for people that might want to want them, but nobody wants them. <laughs> and also, they put the plastic forks in, uh, and I mean, they're beautiful containers. Um, and I have a real problem putting those in my recyclable because they're so good. You know, I'm thinking somebody could use these, you know? So, and they're hard plastic. They are very hard plastic. And if we wanted to protect the animals, I didn't see anything in, in here, we ought to look at the hard plastic um, <laughs> sleeves that go over bottles, beer bottles, Coke bottles, if, if, you like, if you like to drink out of bottles, which I do. I don't like plastic. I like glass bottles. Those are very, very bad. Every time I see one of those uh, that maybe has blown out of somebody's trash container, um, if, if we wanted to uh, put a fee on somebody, uh, somebody ha that has these, their trash containers, that so so they're over full, maybe three of them, and the things are blowing all around the street, I would be, I would be very happy to, to vote for that. And I have seen it in Reading. But, um, um, and I don't see very much in their recyclables. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, those are full too. But uh, it's just too much. We have too much uh, um, paper that we're using. We have too much of everything that we're using and abusing. So I don't think, we're, so I would think that uh, if we brought this back, maybe simply uh, stating the reason for it, which I had understood basically was uh, the trash trucks and, and grinding up, grinding up the, uh, uh, and I can see that as a problem. Certainly it's a problem. Uh, but the next grade, is that going to do the same thing? Do we know that? Or the next grade or the next grade? You know, who knows? I don't know. But anyway, uh, certainly um, I would be, uh, I remember being in Taiwan years ago and seeing all of these bags all over their beautiful beaches, you know, and I, 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 I think about that often. And I am picking up those and putting their beautiful shells in them, but, uh, you know, and thinking, what a, what a terrible thing, all these, all these thin plastic. But they use those uh, for their soups. They would put soups in them, like you're going out and they're having soup for lunch, you know, that's what they have. And they actually use these to drink their soup out of. <laughs> Must have been hard to do, but, I, but, that's, but I've seen them do that. 
So, uh, yeah, so I don't know. So I think- We have I a think, point of order? I think we should bring, I think we should bring this back much more simply. And um, I don't know if it's, I, I think it's a matter of education. I really do. Okay. And as far, no, I wanted to talk about the birds though. And these, these uh, hard- We are, we, the, the, the uh, article is well, about, right now we are discussing indefinitely that. postponing. <clears throat> but you were, you were justifying it, you were justifying it for, for the animals. And these little plastic covers that go on bottles, if you like to drink bottled things, okay? Yeah. That, that plastic sleeve that goes over there, there are circles and they're very- Again, we're talking about the plastic bags. Please stay on the subject. All right, well, we're talking about plastic. We're talking okay. about the plastic bags, yes. And you were inferring that, that these bags were a problem for animals. I don't think they're a problem for animals. But these little sleeves that go over Coke bottles, beer bottles, hard plastic, hard to get them off, keeps the bottles from Again, breaking. we're talking about the plastic no, bags. No, no, no. Yes, yes we are. You, somebody was referring to the animals. Right. And we're talking, okay. the issue right. here is right. banning plastic well, bags. Well, these plastic bags aren't the problem for, for animals, but these are killing the birds. These are okay. hard, hard plastic circles. Further discussion on indefinite postponement. Ms. Phillips. Linda Phillips, Precinct 7. If this is truly a value as, as some believe, there is no, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no harm in postponing this because some of us have brought up questions this evening that have not been answered and we're virtually changing laws on a whim and even the group promoting this was they didn't even do their homework enough and they had six months to do it uh, since, a, since May Town Meeting when they brought forward their instructional motion. Um, I think something that impacts everyone should have more opportunity for public input. Not everybody gets a newspaper. We know people get information in various ways and a lot of us just don't talk in the same circle of people. Uh, of our own interest group where we can encourage feedback from them. Uh, there was one article in the newspaper, it wasn't well published, and for them having six months knowing they were coming back to town meeting, they waited till just three weeks ago, and then after they actually submitted their article, for the warrant, they changed it after. So it appears that there's some more homework that can be done. Maybe some of those simple questions we asked about the things that uh, could have been done, could have been worked on, the, the, um, the um, results, though, the consequences of using cotton bags, tote bags, where they've been. I know we have some, and they've been used for a lot of different things um, that shouldn't be brought into the grocery store for. And um, let's do this right if we're going to do it. Let's do it so our community won't be in shock and let's give them more opportunity to give you feedback and other ideas. Since the meeting on the 24th, we have been doing some research on this subject, but let's face it, a lot of town meeting members don't even pick up the warrant and don't even read it. So I think more time is better. I think it makes a better project. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be going through this line by line. Come back with something that's vetted by your committee by uh, people who know how to write these things that uh, take us in a direction that maybe as um, a town meeting Ms. we can all vote. Uh, okay, further discussion yeah, on the- Yeah, I know, they like further, to interrupt. Further discussion on the um, indefinite postponement. Mr. Brown? Uh, I, did you say you were moving the question? We have a motion to uh, end debate. Is there a second to that? Again, as I said, this takes, requires a two-thirds vote. It's non-debatable. All those in favor of ending debate, this, by the way, will end debate on both the indefinite postponement and the main motion. That's the way that works. So all those in favor, is, is a motion to end debate? You want just this motion? Okay. Just to, to clarify, when you make that, it ends debate on everything. So you, you just want it on indefinite postponement. Okay, so we can, we can do that. So we, we have a motion to, in, to end debate on indefinite postponement. It requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, all those in favor, 
Please rise. And this is a motion to end debate. This is, this, is, this is a motion to end debate strictly on indefinite postponement. So all those in favor of ending debate on indefinite postponement, please rise. Okay. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Forty-two. Forty-two. Forty-two, Miss Russell? Forty-two, okay. Yes. Okay, all those opposed, please rise. Four. 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 Zero. Zero and one. The vote being 129 in the, the affirmative and nine in the negative, the motion has carried and we will now proceed to a vote on indefinite postponement. All those in favor of indefinite postponement, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. We are now back to the main motion as amended. Uh, Ms. Snyder? Gina Snyder, Precinct 5. Um, I wanted to uh, encourage people to vote for this bylaw. Um, we do see when we do the uh, river cleanup annually, um, and actually the person who's led it for over a quarter of a century is here if you um, want him to speak to this subject, but we are, we do find the plastic bags in the river and they do make their way to the ocean, so if anybody was wondering if they actually make it through the storm system or however they get in there, they do get in the river. Um, and um, this bylaw did go through the town council and the bylaw committee and the selectmen's meeting and so on and so forth. So there was a big process to pull this together in the short time frame that we had. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Friedman, did you have a, a proposed amendment? Did I have that right? No? Okay. Mr. Friedman? Uh, town manager made a, a good recommendation, a very small proposal, but again along the lines of this is, um, this is not for uh, consumers bringing bags into stores. On 8.13.3, 8 uh, I think it's 2 now, it says, except as otherwise provided therein, single-use plastic checkout bags shall not be distributed, used or sold for checkout, or any other purposes by any retail instead of at, that changes uh, the meaning to the retail store, not anyone at the store. Is there a second to that? Second. Uh, any discussion on that proposed amendment? None appearing. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, and the motion carries. Okay, we are back to the main motion. Mr. Munn. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jamie Maughan, Precinct 4. And just to, to uh, expand on what Ms. Snyder said, uh, in over 13 years on the Conservation Commission, I've made well over 1,000 site visits to the wetlands in town. And I've seen more bags than you want to count, more bags than you want to pick up in the wetlands and streams in Reading. So as far as uh, it being a problem locally, it definitely is. I also want to point out that, as Mr. Zager said, we do an excellent job in cleaning our catch basins, but catch basins capture the solid material that sinks. These bags float. So when they get in the storm system, they float to the streams. That's where we see them in the stream pickups. That's where we see them in the wetlands in town. And I also finally want to say thank the, the uh, committee for putting this together. You were charged by this town meeting to put together, look at options and put together a, a bylaw, and I think you did an excellent job, and I'm definitely going to vote for it. Thank you.
Further discussion? Yes. Mr. Rorock. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Tom O'Rourke, Precinct 2. I, I just sort of echo what Mr. Mon said. Uh, I think Dave Zeke and the Climate Committee uh, have done a lot of good work in town in general uh, for the past several years, and uh, they were charged with the responsibility of coming back with a bylaw. I think it was well presented, uh, researched, and uh, it's a small step. It doesn't uh, prevent us from continuing to do a good job, which I hope we will in recycling, and uh, I think it's, uh, it's something we should vote for tonight. Thank you. Further discussion? Um, yes. Mr. Brown? Uh, Peter Brown, Precinct 8. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, While well, we drove to town meeting tonight, opened up the door, looked down on the ground, what's there? Market basket, plastic bag. Could you use the microphone? I'm having trouble so, hearing you. As soon as I got to the parking lot of the high school, we opened the door of the car and looked down and there was a plastic bag on the ground. I regularly take my dogs down to the athletic fields and uh, I don't like to find plastic and trash on the athletic fields. I regularly take something and pick up that stuff because it bothers me. I find plastic bags in the athletic fields all the time, blowing around. I pick them up. I think, I think uh, this is not a big deal. <laughs> it's not a big deal to uh, take a reusable bag to Market Basket when you go shopping, or to Home Depot or anywhere else. It's just, it's just we just need to be a, a little bit more thoughtful. That's that's all. Um, I do have. A question about uh, one of the exemptions that you have in 813.3.4, uh, the small hardware items. Could you explain that? Because it seems to me that, uh, that, that that's a, a loophole that uh, Home Depot could, you know, use to say that they don't need to switch. Right, so there, you, you know, we're talking like you know nuts and bolts or whatever you know you might get. So if you have it, if you had a bag that you're in the, in the midst of the store somewhere where you're collecting those things, and you carry that bag to the to the checkout counter, it would not be covered by this bylaw. Only what they would issue you at the checkout counter is covered. But so doesn't doesn't this doesn't this kind of imply that if you went to Home Depot, Home Depot could say, well, we, we sell hardware items, and so, you know, we, we don't need to pay attention to this bylaw. So Home Depot said most of our stuff doesn't require a bag at all. I don't know if you believe that, but I mean, that, that's what they said. So, so, yeah, if you walked, if you, you know, if you got to the checkout counter and they didn't issue you a checkout bag of any kind, you just walk down out with the, the bag that you picked up in the middle of the store somewhere, that would, that would be legal under this bylaw. Okay. Uh, and in terms of enforcement, um, I understand, you know, you, you know, this wants to be, you're, you're taking a light touch. But um, so the first time that there's an, a problem that's going to be a warning, and then the second time a $50 fine, and then a $200 fine. I mean, is it? Did you discuss as a committee whether or not a business just might ignore the requirement and just pay the fines? Yes. So, so if you know, yes. Yeah, so if they figure well, $200 just a cost to do in business. Yeah. <clears throat> And yeah, we did talk about that. And, and that's where you get into this, you know, repeated violations is where you get into these all other forms of enforcement. Go to court, you know, have a fine. So what you call the fine, right? So, so the, 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 the town could then escalate its, its enforcement. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's it. Yes, in the back. Hi, Mary Ann Downing, Precinct 3. Can, I, can you scroll back up to the definition of recyclable paper bag? 
This is just a, a quick question. I, I might have missed 8.13.2.4. I guess what I just want to understand is, are all paper bags by definition recyclable? I'm th trying to think of when you go to some places and maybe it's more like a jewelry store or a pamplemousse and you get those paper bags that are kind of coated with the shoelace or the yarn kind of strap, you know what I mean? Are those not going to be allowed under this now? You that know, they look like gift bags, but they give them to you at the register. Right. That would not qualify as a recyclable paper bag. So that could dissuade. I mean, we're trying to bring businesses in town, and so places would be just, they wouldn't be able to give out those kinds of bags. Maybe they don't want to. Maybe they're more expensive, but those would not be allowed. Um, <coughs> they're so, not so recyclable, some, are they? Talking about, you're not, they're probably not recyclable if they've got all kind of glitter or whatever, well, right? I mean, whatever. I'm I don't gonna... mean like a, the pamplemousse, but like, if you, you know, like we don't have a Sephora in town, but like those kinds of bags, they're black, they're like a coated paper. Mm -hmm. So those would not be allowed. You know, I, hmm? but they're not a recyclable paper bag. Not, like what, would, is there something a recyclable that, recyclable paper bag? So if they're not, if they're a paper bag, but not a recyclable paper bag, are they allowed? I don't think it would be allowed. Okay. One, one speaker at a time, please. Yes. Yes, they are allowed. Do we have an answer from town council? Why don't you just take out recyclable and say all paper bags are allowed? No. Or. I'm not no, recyclable is important. In okay. this, in this so there are paper bags that exist that are not recyclable. Yeah, right, right. Okay. And it's, and they're not re are they reuse are they could so they, they be reusable or something so they're like that? They're, it could be. Yeah, they could they're be reusable. reusable but not recyclable. Could be. Okay, so that's how you get them in. I guess so. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Further discussion. Mr. Tuttle. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Dave Tuttle of Precinct 3. I am opposed to this bylaw because I believe that it's um, fixing a problem either the wrong way or fixing the wrong problem. The issue is that the thin uh, plastic checkout bags are completely recyclable. There's a, a spot at uh, Stop and Shop where you can take them and stuff them into the thing, and they are taken care of. But I, as I understand it, I'm not allowed to throw them in the recycling bin because our single stream recycling does not allow that, those particular uh, plastic films. And so I'm required to throw them in the trash. And the issue is in the environment is the fact that the thin film plastic gets into the environment. The only way to, to correct that uh, is to have a recycling path for the thin plastic. I haven't used, I haven't taken one of the, the thin bags away from a store in about two years. I have a bag of reusable bags in the back of my car. I'm one of the odd people who always brings a bag into the store and usually enough bags for whatever I'm planning to buy or getting the paper bags. And it's what we're doing here is restricting the commercial endeavor that we want to encourage in town without fixing the problem for the environment. Saw a hand right in the middle of the room. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ed Ross, Precinct 5. Uh, just a quick question. I think it actually refers to uh, Mr. Friedman's uh, amendment. I think it was um, 8.13.3.2. It's, it's related to enforcement. Um, so just a kind of a quick question about that. Um, so it, uh, I guess my question is, like, if I'm a customer and I come in and I use those bags, how is the director going to know that it's the customer doing it 
and not the retail, establish, uh, retail establishment? I don't think the director would ever know. If you brought, if you brought those kind of bags in yourself, you're saying? Yeah, so if I did it, mm -hmm. I brought them in. I, you know, so I'm, you know, like. Right. Uh, one speaker, please. Yeah, so, but begin at my point. So, like, if, if, if the retail establishment is reported, but I'm the one that's doing it, how are they going to know the difference? I think, I think it would be pretty straightforward. I think if, there, if somebody, you're assuming somebody complained because you were in the, in the building with a thin film bag, they would, go to the, they would go to the store and see if there were thin film bags there. And if there weren't, because you were gone by that time, there would be no violation. So, so I mean, I guess that's that's more of the question as far as how would the, you know, how would do they go through the process of in, that inspection? Is it? Well, I mean, that's that's up to them. But it's but I mean, it's 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 whatever process they want to to do. But it's not it's not constant monitoring of what goes in and out of of every uh, business, right? In writing, it's 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 either it's either somebody complains. Or, or they happen, or they do an inspection, in fact. Yeah. Right, thank you. Further discussion? Ms. Hillary? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jennifer Hillary, Precinct 7. I have a motion to amend 8.13.41. And the reason for this motion is that the unintended consequence of allowing the director of the DPW to promulgate rules and regulations is that this section is now allowing criminal and civil penalties to attach to them. And my concern, I, I am in full support of this bylaw, but my concern is that retail establishments would not be on notice of those regulations uh, created by the DPW director and I believe any criminal and civil penalties should only attach to a bylaw that this body has voted on. So if I may, here is my suggested amendment. The word lawful be in, placed in front of means. Where are we, here? Uh, yes, right there. And that we delete and any regulation adopted pursuant thereto. So um, lawful and? Um, I'm sorry. If you delete that and, and you go all the way to the end of that sentence. After oh, section 8.13, delete that and any regulations adopted pursuant thereto. No, no. Uh, delete. delete those. I'm sorry. Any regulations? If you delete. Oh, you, you don't want the, what's there. Correct. Exactly. And my hope is that th this would now mean that criminal and civil fines and penalties were, will only attach to the bylaws that we are voting on tonight. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Meares, you have a comment or are you just looking? So it's this, it's this word and this deletion. Mr. Mayor. So, so your intention is that the regulations, whatever regulations are, will have no enforcement mechanism? Is that the idea? It's not that they couldn't be enforced, but the way this is worded to me reads that criminal fines, which we understand that first section to yeah. apply to, and non-criminal dispositions and penalties would apply to regulations that our DPW director creates. 
And to, to me, it's this body's so, decision. Okay, so to be clear, can't use criminal fines to enforce the regulations, only the, only the bylaw. So, um, right. Now, if you do this, you, you um, the regulations have no means of, you can't use criminal penalties and you can't use the ticketing either for the regulations. Is that what you intend? The way it reads is that any other lawful means of enforcement in addition to any other lawful means of enforcement, the provisions of this section and any regulations may be enforced by non-criminal disposition. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, actually, I shouldn't say, my intent is not for criminal and civil penalties to attach to regulations that this body hasn't approved. Okay. And the means by which the director of the DPW can enforce you know, we've given him the permission to create rules and regulations to implement this. Okay. okay. Um, so, what you've done is exactly what you intended to do. You intend to make it so that there is no criminal penalty and no civil penalty that attaches to the regulations. That the, That's what you've done. The regulations in 8.13.4.4. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. But this is a bylaw. So we can attach like the entirety right. of this. That's right. The, okay. The bylaw can be enforced by criminal penalties or by civil penalties, but the the um, the regulations adopted pursuant to the bylaw can't be enforced by either. Cor uh, correct. Okay. That, then, if that's your intention, that's what it does. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there a second? Point of order first, okay. Could you use the microphone, please? Mark Doxter, Precinct 1. Would it be possible for someone to translate that for, for the rest of us so we can understand it? Yeah, so the, the bylaw has a feature that allows the D, DPW director to promulgate rules and regulations to enforce this bylaw. This would mean those rules and regulations that the DPW uh, put put in, in, in uh, you know, defined, could not themselves be enforced. Right? Is there another comment or is it the way? Okay. <laughs> is there a second to that motion? A point of order? Okay, is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay, now we have discussion on this a proposed amendment. Ms. Webb, did you have a comment on this amendment? Okay, well, ask, you can ask the question. Lane Webb, Precinct 1. I, I thought the way that I understand what, what Mrs. Hillary is trying to do is make sure that what can be enforced by a fine or penalty is only what we agree to in this bylaw and that the DPW director is not given some other means to create other fines. Because previously, we, we, we kept in promulgate regulations and whatever, the rest of that sentence. So that's what I understood. And I agree with that, because I wasn't comfortable with the in addition to any other means of enforcement. Because that, to me, in my layman's, is like somebody's going to come up to me and just decide that the thing I'm doing today is illegal or wrong and I should be punished for it. So anyway, I don't know if I understood. I think you I got guess. it. I think that's what it is. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes, Mr. O'Neill. John O'Neill, Precinct 4. Uh, I think the amendment's unnecessary. I think the only th there's a penalty clause, it's, so it clearly states this is what it has to be. And you need something else as far as other means of enforcement, because if somebody refuses to pay, then you need to be able to then take steps to bring them to court to make sure they pay. But it's limited, and lawful is kind of like in South, I mean, by definition, if it's, if it's unlawful, it can't be enforced. So you can only enforce things that are, in fact, 
lawful because boom, you'd be sued right away. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Yes, Mr. Brown on the right and then we'll... <laughs> Peter Brown, Precinct 8. Uh, Jenna, I just, I just don't understand the concern. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to vote in favor of this amendment either. I mean, the, you know, you're, you're entrusting the, the head of DPW to, to enforce this. I, I just don't understand the, the reticence of, uh, you know, trying to uh, kind of keep him uh, constrained. I, I just don't understand it. Maybe you could explain further what your concern is. Ms. Hillary? S certainly. I'm certainly not indicating, or, and I apologize if I have any distrust in our leadership. Rather, when you look at, and I spent a lot of time looking at the statutes enacted, or bylaws enacted by other towns. First of all, all of them said other lawful means of enforcement. When they use this phrase, it often said lawful means of enforcement in equity or law. I didn't add that part. And I think, although it certainly is implied that it should be lawful means of enforcement, I think this is a nice, reasonable addition. In terms of and any, other res any regulations adopted pursuant thereto, this is strictly because, as one fellow town meeting member pointed out earlier, we want our retail establishments to be on notice for what they face criminal and civil penalties and fines for. And we are putting them on notice by limiting the civil and criminal penalties to just the bylaws we enact tonight. It doesn't mean that the director's um, rules and regulations are not um, enforceable. It just means that the enforcement attached to them is not criminal and civil. Um, in this context. Does, does that answer your question? Further discussion? Further discussion on the proposed amendment. Yes, Mr. Sasso. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Sasso, Precinct 2. Um, I always like it if we're talking about something like this to make it practical. So what if the director put a regulation in place that said every year every business had to submit to the town a listing of all the bags they used to confirm what was going on. So if a business doesn't provide that submission, then the way this was written previously, it could potentially say that well they could get fined just for not submitting it. The alternative with this now, it says well the regulation doesn't tie with it any criminal or civil penalty, so you can't, you can't fine or penal, penalize the business for not turning in the regulation, turning in this report, for example. At least that's how I could understand it. I mean, obviously, you know, this, this is not different than other areas. I mean, there are other committees and commissions that are given the opportunity to put rules and regulations and procedures in place. Uh, and I'm not suggesting, uh, as was the prior speaker, that we don't have trust in the folks that are doing this, but I think that's, the, that's an example for, of, of, I think, what we're talking about here. So I'm not suggesting whether I agree or disagree, I'm just saying this is one potential option, right? So this is, I think this is really what we're talking about. So if you would, under those circumstances, would say, okay, they can put whatever regulation in place, but if the business doesn't comply with that particular regulation, we're not going to tag them for it, but that still leaves the town with the, the, the question of, well, how do I enforce it? How do I actually find that information out? Thank you. Further discussion on the amendment? Mr. Brown? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Ian Brown, Precinct 8. I had a general, and I'll try to make this overall arching question. Uh, so the cynic in me says, what if Market Basket chooses to eat the cost of $200 fine and continue to eat that cost, right? They go to court, they willingly pay the $200, but they still do not make any changes because it is just $200 and it's market basket. What happens at that point where they're just repeatedly paying $200 willingly and not fixing anything? 
Yeah, so we had this question earlier. Okay. And, and the answer is that if, if they continue to violate the, the bylaw, then the city can escalate the, the enforcement to the courts. Okay. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Ms. Hillary? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Just one other way to look at this is, and again, I, I apologize for belaboring this, but I do think it's an important point. Do we want this body to create the, the laws, the bylaws, that our retail establishments will be held civilly and criminally liable for? Or do we want to extend that to an individual? And again, this is not a trust issue, but rather a philosophically, procedurally, how do we want this bylaw to be enforced? Thank you. Further discussion on the proposed amendment? Now appearing. Was there, was there, no. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. We're back to the main motion again. Further discussion? Uh, people who haven't spoken yet first? We're getting two and a half hours here. Okay, I guess there's no one new. Okay, uh, Mr. Phillips. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gary Phillips. Uh, Do we have a point of order? I'm sorry? I did not see them. Oh, you haven't spoken? Oh, okay. Well, I have I recognized him, but I will come right back to you. Could you use the microphone? Uh, Mr. Phillips, I'll get right back to you. I'm just, just for my memory, I can't remember what we did on 8.13.4.4. So if you scroll up to that and just leave it there, that's great. Okay, Mr. Phillips. Thank you. Could you please uh, scroll either up or down to 8.13.3.43? Eight thirteen three three. This happens to be my favorite section of the article. Uh, when when all is said and done, let's bear in mind this truth. This article will not eliminate plastic bags. All you see on that list will still be produced and find its way in the environment, and hopefully uh, into a recycling system. A lot of it will end up in the trash and will be incinerated or in landfills. Add to that list three mil bags, construction plastic, and heavier duty bags. All I'm saying is this, is that it is, we need time to hear the alternative of recycling. I don't think it's fair to say there was plenty of time for that to have occurred. Most, we, even in this body, didn't have time to go ahead and examine an exact proposal until it was presented here at town meeting. We were just told by their mandate that they were what? They were to go ahead and uh, they would pursue alternatives or different approaches for a bag ban law. What time did that give us to go ahead and evaluate, the, evaluate anything but the unknown? I don't like being submitted to exposed to fear tactics. We talk about sea salt contamination and other things that I think are just, uh, just a ruse to distract from the real issue, the need to recycle. I'll guarantee you that the FDA has not either fined or closed down a single sea salt manufacturer. Point of order. We have a point of order. Yes. Um, rule seven, page 20 states that no town meeting member or other person shall speak on any question more than 10 minutes without first obtaining the permission of the meeting. I don't, is there a difference between one person standing up and speaking for 10 minutes or speaking for, oh, asking to speak longer or speaking? The for rule is your first time you have 10 minutes, after that you have five. If you, speak, it, if you that, speak two minutes the first time, you've used up your first time. Is that indefinitely? Yes. It, is, yes. Mr. Mr. Phillips. Well, thank you. I should think that if there was a cumulative prohibition, 
then a whole lot of discussion would come to an end. Uh, in the end, I want to say this. I believe we're being sold a defective bill of goods by sidestepping the need, a, a, a defective, indeficient bill of good, goods by sidestepping the need to support and advance plastic bag recycling. Let there be a town-wide vote. Should the voters at large pass, pass uh, this amendment or one like it, then I'd have no issue with their choice. I do take issue with denying them their right and their opportunity to be heard. The greater issue is really about freedom, representative government, and, do, and, and, and observing and respecting the will of the people. Again, I don't think there's been a fair hearing for, for a sound, viable alternative that in the end, and in the long run, is going to prove to be more effective and more successful. Thank you all. Okay, if I missed people who hadn't spoken before, I apologize, but are there new speakers? Yes, in the back row. Thanks, Heather Klisch, Precinct 7. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is I guess one thing we all have in common is a lot of experience with bags. Um, and so, and I want to thank you also for bringing this forward. I admire your stamina for standing up and answering all of these questions tonight. My experience with bags is this. Um, the alternative that I use, the alternative that I use to recycling is I carry around my nylon bags for groceries. They work really well. I don't put dirty shoes in them. I don't put dirty clothes in them so there's not cross-contamination. Um, sometimes I forget them, and I use and I and I get the little plastic bags that we're we're talking about banning tonight. They're terrible bags for reusing. They're always they tear. There are holes. I try to recycle them. I try to reuse them. You have to double bag them. Stuff falls out. They're lousy bags. So I, I my other experience with bags with these bags is I have picked them out of rivers. I've picked them out of trailheads. I've picked them off beaches. I've. I've I see them all over the place. I ride the train to Boston almost every day. After we made the um, instructional motion while we were expecting this, I started paying attention. They're all over the place. They're, they, they are a substantial source of litter. So I'm planning to support this. I know that it's not going to solve all of the problems. It's not going to eliminate litter. It's not going to eliminate greenhouse gas emissions. It's not going to all by itself protect wildlife. Um, <laughs> it's not even going to eliminate plastic bags. We will still have the opportunity to improve recycling of plastic bags. But for this, it will help, and that's why I'm going to vote for it, and I hope you do too. Uh, Mr. Herrick, could you have your hand up? No, okay. Further discussion of new speakers? Yes, on the uh, aisle. Thank you, Caitlin Mercurio, Precinct 2. Um, in regards to waste minimization, there's an accepted order of hierarchy. Um, number one being to reduce, number two, reuse, and number three, recycle. Um, so I intend on supporting this um, because I think that the best thing that we can do is reduce the problem from the source. And thank you for your work on this. And in the back, yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Sheila Mulray, Precinct 1. Um, I commend Mr. Phillips for talking about recycling. However, I don't think this is mutually exclusive. I think this is a step in the right direction, and there is nothing stopping us from taking the next step and um, following a, a more, um, a, a stronger recycling program. For the discussion, new speakers first. Are there any? Okay, anyone else? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we have spoken before. Anybody else? No new speakers? Okay, yes, you can get up. Dan Dua, Precinct 3. Um, I'm curious to know, can I make a motion to get this on the ballot instead of voting here tonight for town meeting? That would be a question for town council, but I don't believe there is a, a method of doing that. Mr. Meares, do you have
so the answer, it depends on what you're trying to do. You, um, you can, uh, only the Board of Selectmen, this body does not have the authority to put anything on the ballot. So only the Board of Selectmen can do that, so you'd have to go and get the Board of Selectmen to do it. If you want to make an amendment that says this um, bylaw won't take effect until it's approved by the voters at a ballot question, you can do that. I would like to make that amendment. Okay, do we have a spot for that? A logical spot? First, we need to make it a. So would I just go all the way down to the bottom? No, no. Before the end. Okay. So you want to you want to do. Uh, uh, eight, oh, I'm sorry. It's eight point one three point five. Okay. So not not there. Oh, you're going to hit return. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is bold. Eight eight point thirteen point five. Effective date. Okay, and then below that, you're going to make eight. You're going to make eight point thirty. You're going to have oh. eight point thirteen point five point one. Section 8.13 shall not be, shall not take effect until um, approved by the voters at a town election. Okay, is that acceptable? That acceptable amendment? I'm assuming it is. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion on the proposed amendment. None appearing. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. We are back to the main motion. We have a, who was that? I, I didn't see that. Mr. Berman moves that we uh, move the qu previous question and end debate, non debatable. Two-thirds vote required. All those in favor of ending debate, please rise. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Forty. Forty. Those opposed to ending debate, please rise. Five. Five. Two. Two. Three. 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 The vote being 118 to 13, the question has been moved. We will now proceed to the main motion. Hold on a second. Okay. So the main motion as amended is in front of the body. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion carries. Mr. Arena moves that we take Article 3 from Thank the you. table. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, the motion carries. We have two instructional motions. The first one is by Mr. Brown. 
Point of order. No, only the zoning bylaw. Yeah. Point of order. Mr. Yes, Mr. Smith. Um, Crook. Stephen Crook, Precinct 2. I believe you said take Article 3 from the table. Did you not mean to take Article 2 from the table? I am stand corrected. Article 2. <laughs> from the amendment. <laughs> All those in favor of taking Article 2 from the table, please raise your hand. Uh, those opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mario. Good evening, Bill Brown, Precinct 8, a member of the Cemetery Board of Commissioners. Um, I'd ask to look under page two of your blue pages in your warrant, Capital Improvement Program. About halfway down, hey, stay around. You got what you wanted, don't leave. <laughs> okay. As it says, you'll find a DPW cemetery garage removed. In my hand, I hold up a thing that I've been given by the Board of Selectmen many years ago, and it says values. And I will quote from it. Integrity and transparency. The Cemetery Board of Trustees, the Permanent Building Committee, and the Finance Committee were not informed of the removal. Integrity, transparency, I don't think so. Article 7. Point, excuse me, 7.7, .7, Capital Improvement Programs, part states, the town manager shall submit a capital improvements program to the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee. Uh, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, I'm sorry, I may have missed it, I'm getting tired, but did you actually make a motion to, to uh, yes. okay, you, I, I, does I the body know what we're, you're talking about? Yes. Okay. No, no? no? no. So, please make a motion first. Uh, I don't have a copy. Oh. Sorry. I brought everything else back. Clear it up a little bit. Move that the Board of Selectmen instruct the town manager to place on the capital improvement plan the sum of $2,500,000 by the deficit or otherwise for the construction of a cemetery building in the fiscal year 2019. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Brown. Thank you. So now I'm going to get down a little further. And where was the public discussion and input in this body? Another value is excellence striving for efficiency and cost effectiveness. How then can moving men to, and equipment to four locations instead of three be cost effective? The Cemetery Board of Trustees only asked that we be allowed to bring this to you, the overall body, and not leave it to the just the five selectmen. Thank you. Okay, further discussion on the, the uh, instructional motion? Mr. Struble. Could we have comment from the Board of Selectmen, please? Do we have a comment from the Board of Selectmen? Mr. Arena? No. Mr. Arena. Oh, Mr. Lasham. He just got promoted. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a Selectman. Um, the capital plan was presented to FinCom. I'm not sure we had a discussion in this specific part in, in a public meeting. Um, as I mentioned at the first night of town meeting, this body did have a discussion within the last year of reducing the funding for the Permanent Building Committee to explore a cemetery garage. And I couldn't tell you the full story then. I can tell you, and I did tell you recently, we're exploring a shared garage at um, at Camp Curtis with Wakefield. Um, so I believe the matter has been adequately discussed in public. Um, if this is approved, which I, I do respect Mr. Brown's intentions, just to remind him under FinCom policy, a two and a half million dollar uh, capital item is subject to a debt exclusion or a capital exclusion. So it will not be part of the capital plan in terms of the general fund inside the levy. Thank you. Further discussion? Not appearing. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor of the instructional motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the motion does not carry. Second one is from Mr. Sakaris. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Demetra Tsekras, Precinct 4. Um, I'm just going to read the motion. Um, I'd like the town meeting to direct the bylaw committee <laughs> in conjunction with the Board of Selectmen to remove gendered language from the general bylaw and from the charter. Provide progress and projected finish date to town meeting in the April 2018 <coughs> session. And by the April 2018 town meeting session, have a motion for changing the Board of Selectmen to select board or a different recommended gender neutral title. Is there a second? Second. Miss, and any further discussion on that motion? Mr. Struble. I don't believe the uh, bylaw committee or the Board of Selectmen have the ability to change the charter. I think that is the uh, part of view of the Charter Review Committee, which comes into being every 10 years uh, by Section 413 of the Charter, uh, which just got done with uh, one revision and probably won't be coming into being for a good, good amount of time. Um, I have no problem with the Bylaw Committee being directed, but I think uh, the Charter is uh, that committee's uh, responsibility. Mr. Meares. So under our charter, we have a provision in the charter that uh, requires the creation every 10 years of a charter review committee to review the whole charter and make recommendations for uh, change. That is one way to amend the charter. But that's not the only way to amend the charter. Um, town meeting can consider um, any proposals to amend the charter. They can consider them at any time. And the process is it requires a two-thirds vote of town meeting, followed by a review by the Attorney General, um, and assuming it passes that, then it has to go to a ballot question. So um, this, as I understand this instructional motion, it's asking the bylaw committee to come forward with a proposal for, uh, for town meeting to consider, and that's the way to kick off the process outside of the regular 10-year process, the 10-year cycle. Further discussion? Yes. Ms. Doctor. Doc. Yeah. Uh, Nancy Doctor, Precinct 1. I just have a, um, a financial question. Um, is that going to require the printing and distributing of the charter to every household again? Because I, I was concerned that that was a $20,000 cost, I thought to send that out. I just want to clarify what the cost would be to do this. Mr. Meares. So I don't know what the cost would be, but, but that is um, part of the, uh, of the uh, ballot process. So yes, it would if, if town meeting votes to uh, propose an, um, to the voters an amendment to the charter, that's what, um, uh, that's part of the process is distributing copies to, to every um, household. Further discussion? Not appearing. Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor of the instructional motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed? And the chair is in doubt. I would ask, if we still have all our counters? I believe we do. All right, all those in favor, please rise. Nine. Ten. Ten. Sixteen. Sixteen. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. All those opposed? Eighteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. Eleven. Eleven. Nine. Nine. The vote being 66 in the affirmative and 52 in the negative, the motion carries. Mr. Arena, do you have a motion? 
We have a motion to adjourn sine die. Is there a second? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed? The motion carries. This town meeting stands adjourned. Sine die.